Good Monday morning and welcome to Midnight's Edge in the Morning. I am Tom Connors. We're back again. We have the boss man, Andre, with us. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Mm, ask me again in about 10 minutes. Okay, uh, also, with us, also with us is Mike, the Mexican Iron Man, the producer extraordinaire. How are you doing? Uh, very uh, taco-licious. Taco-licious. Yeah. Uh, so yep, basically I had in tacos. need of some rabbit chickens. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had taco. I, I made myself homemade tacos, so I'm taco-licious. Well, from one coast to another, we've got Script Doctor in uh, Canada. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How is everybody today? Doing the best we can. Lovely. We also have the one, the only, George, the giant slayer with us. How you doing, George? George. I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank you for having me. George, he's got a beautiful soul. <laughs> Thank that, of course, <laughs> is last but not least, the one, the only, Culture Casino. Hey, everybody. Hey, casino today, but yes. <laughs> I am glad to be here, guys. This is uh, this. is We're going to have some fun. There's some good topics to talk about. I'm stoked. Let's go. Yes, indeed. We're getting lots of love for George in the chat already. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for being here. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Get the word out there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, our support goes out to Nick Ricada. Uh, we heard uh, what was going on. It seems like him and any other independent YouTube channels that are showing the uh, case that shall not be named now because YouTube likes to do what they do uh, <clears throat> is being shut down. But they're back up, so thankfully they uh, they got that taken care of. But uh, I'm sure it's no help. Thanks to no help from Team YouTube anyway. Um, but anyhow, moving on, uh, Andre. So what are we up to this morning? Well, we have uh, quite a few things to discuss outside of um, of uh, YouTube suddenly realized, oh shit, maybe taking down the stream full of lawyers wasn't the hottest idea. <laughs> um, no, uh, we, have, uh, we have some cool topics today. Of course, we have the Eternals box office update. And it is faring at the box office, how do we put it, exactly as expected. So we're going to have some fun with that. We'll be talking about uh, about uh, the Frankensteinian abomination in the eyes of God. That is that huge, freaky red dog that is also giving the Eternals a run for its money at the box office. Unbelievable. Uh, and uh, then, of course, we have Ridley Scott, great filmmaker, according to some opinions are divided on the subject. And he has also decided to speak out against comic book movies. Uh, so, yeah, talk about uh, throwing stones while you're in the glass house or whatever the saying goes. Uh, and uh, then, of course, we'll see what you guys bring up in the chat. So, as usual, I think we're going to have um, a fun uh, show today. And we have some great people watching us. We already have more than 500 watching. Everyone, please smash that like. Help share this stream. We have deleted scenes here who, of, of course, uh, caught what I was talking about, saying, let's go Clifford. Indeed, indeed. And Rick, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, Lucy is here, and he uh, also needs some tacos, and yeah, we also need some, some oh. tacos. Uh, uh, Keely Chow is here saying, hey, cultured casino, and I'm going to add that's a nice new look you got there, um, mm -hmm. and prepare to to uh, wipe up the, the tears of uh, women and men everywhere. That's true. <laughs> but it's all for a good cause. Yeah. Everyone go check out cultured casino's channel for some more details on that oh, yeah. we have uh, uh the norwegian blue who's not actually norwegian saying let's go indeed indeed we have d bud martin here we have dash attack here ram bam 3000 is here cody guy is here and sander hammerschlag wild rose and d bud martin is here we also have a couple of Super Chats deleted scenes. Stephen, our good friend, uh, says for $5, Hail Andre, Tom, Mike, Script, Culture, George, Wrenches, and Chat. Can't stop the signal. They can try, though, but as long as they don't succeed, then all is good. Yeah. 
Uh, let's uh, go through a couple of other super chats before we before we move on with the show proper and start having fun with the Eternals. Uh, because again, as we like to say, there's uh, or at least that I like to say, there's no Freude like Schadenfreude, <laughs> and we can take a little bit of that in the Eternals box office. Yeah. Uh, then we have a couple of uh, Scandinavian super chats here. We have Joachim Stark representing Sweden, saying the series Doomcock recommended last night, Inside Job. Uh, watch it. It might be the best on Netflix right now. Hit the mm -hmm. like button. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, I'll check out uh, Inside Job when uh, opportunity Joe for Kim, uh, I rest. saw two episodes last night after the Doomcock show. It is freaking hilarious. What's it about? It is. Uh, imagine it's. First of all, it's animated, okay. and it's. It's. Uh, well, I'll use what what DC, DC said, which is that uh, it's like The Office animated, but they work in a secret military paranormal underground office, like deep state kind of stuff. It is hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. Good. Has anybody checked out that uh, new uh, Blade Runner animation, the Black Lotus? I just saw. I was just watching a few minutes late last night. I heard about it, but I haven't had a chance to see. Yeah, it it's interesting so far. The first ten minutes. Yeah, has anybody right. seen on my list? Has, has anybody seen Red Notice, the big, the big budget Netflix film? Also mm -hmm. on my no, on my list. I'm going to see right. it next Is that week. the Gal Gadot one with uh, yeah. The Rock? Mm, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah. Somebody let me know if it's any good, please. Okay. There's only so much Ryan Reynolds I can take in the yard. Just some <laughs> free guy. I mean, you know that whole like Ryan Reynolds is Ryan Reynolds character. God, there's only so much of a mic I can take in a year. Yeah, the okay. only new thing I've seen lately was the uh, Rocky Four. So, oh, how was it? I'm gonna watch it. Uh, all right, I got yelled at by everybody because I when I talked about it the other night, they're like, "Are you crazy?" It's full of different alternate takes. I'm like, no. it's still the same fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, come on. It's Rocky. It wouldn't even matter if it was a new film. It's Rocky. You know how it's going to go. It, it's not really. Well, well it's, there is some differences in it, but it's like, basically, if you hate that robot, you'll love the new version. Oh, I it hated the more, robot. Yeah, so it, it's a little bit more serious, but okay. I'm curious if somebody who has never seen the film before would actually know what the fuck was going on because mm. there's like 30 minutes of the movie missing okay and to me it feels like important uh you know stuff you need to know in and other words this is a case of stick with the theatrical gun. maybe it feels like a big fan edit i don't know you might mm. like it actually andre it's hard to say i thought they I, was some... <laughs> I thought they were supposed to I add a problem time with the to it oh. Weren't they supposed to add time to it originally? Add they scenes? did add stuff. There is okay. a couple added scenes, but a lot of it's stuff that was taken care of just easily with dialogue in the other version. There was only like one or two things that were really kind of added that wow. were like stuff that wasn't in the other version, really. And it's very minimal. Okay. Like the, there was okay. only like one thing that I felt like was a bigger deal. The the ending's a little different, but it's it's more or less just the movie ends in a different place. There's a lot of alternate takes and uh, Stallone added some new dialogue to one bit, and there's some other things here and there. But it's I don't know. I felt it felt like a fancy fan edit to me, do, and I'm do, just like, do you think it was know. a cash grab more than an actually a director's <sighs> edit? I don't know. Maybe I feel like it'll. I, I don't know why MGM would let him mess with that one because that's probably the most popular one besides the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the the fifth one is the one that needs a recut. But oh, since he yeah. didn't direct that one, I mean, that's probably why he won't touch that one. So I don't know. It's it doesn't feel like a total cash grab, but okay, it does feel like there was much to do about nothing in the end. I mean, it does have a bit more of a serious tone. It reminded me of the Godfather Coda. Recut. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people that really didn't like that. I really had high expectations for it. I, I, I had read that, you know, oh, they're going to change what happens to Apollo and you're going to see a more serious, more centered Rocky like uh, in no. Rocky 1. Now, the only difference there is it kind of centers a little bit more of on Apollo worrying about being a has-been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it tie so, in anything to the new universe with Creed? No. Oh, okay. Really. Okay. So. No. Right. Sounds like a pretty, pretty waste, if you ask me that. Yeah. But um, yeah. But speaking of new movies we've seen, uh, I was at the cinema this weekend. Uh, of course, Tom and uh, Mike already knows this, but uh, I went to see 
a great CGI special effects e extravaganza, <laughs> namely Paw Patrol. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't in a theater with my kids. CGI beauty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, it was uh, it wasn't bad. I'm not a huge fan of Paw Patrol, not by a long shot, but. Uh, for a wholesome movie for the kids, that was uh, it was a uh, pretty good. So well, I kudos. do remember, and, like when they were at, on, it was under attack. You were kind of yeah, like, that's why I brought it up because show, I remember really? like last year, people wanted to see uh, the the lead dog in Paw Patrol, Chase, who's a police dog or other police puppy. They wanted to see him euthanized because um, uh, because he put uh, portrayed police in a good light. You can't do that. Uh, but I'm very happy to say that they did not uh, give in to the demands. They did not uh, uh, either portray him in a bad light or kill him or anything like that. On the contrary, they humanized the little puppy as much as possibly can be done to an animated puppy. So um, kudos. Go, go see Paw Patrol if you have uh, sufficiently young kids. Otherwise, there's really no need. But it's probably better than Clifford, the... the Giant abomination in the eyes of God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Clifford actually put up a fight against Eternals. But we're going to talk about that here in a moment. Yeah, we'll talk about. It. But first, we have a couple more super chats to to go oh. through. Uh, Perilous Plain, uh, another representing Scandinavia, my own homeland. In fact, says, check out this clip. If veterans rule the world, Starship Troopers. I love the Starship Troopers book. The films are proto woke. Go away and never come back. We deserve a good Starship Troopers miniseries. And uh, yeah, he sent me the clip that we're talking about. I haven't. It's an hour long, so I haven't wow. seen it. Uh, but just look for If Veterans Rule the World Starship Troopers. I think you'll find it that way. An hour long clip. It seemed pretty interesting. So cool. I look forward to seeing the rest of it. <laughs> Uh, and then we have uh, the Waltman 4, who says for $4.99, switch between Midnight Sedge and Riqueta right now. And even then, they just sniped Nick Stream for policy violations. Yeah, that was messed up. But but I think he was like back up again last we checked. Thank God for that. But uh, so I can only imagine they must have realized that, oh, shit, like taking down a whole panel full of lawyers, that might really? actually do some damage here. I can't imagine otherwise. Yeah. Well, it looks like the numbers for Eternals, because uh, I think it was Valiant who was asking over under on 25. I went over, but it was right. It was over 25, but it was still under 30, that's for sure. Holy crap. Yeah, I'll we'll get into that momentarily. Iron Caster says, looks like the critics are tossing Cowboy Bebop yeah, under yeah. the bus. Oh, Watch out for that story. Yeah, I bet that this is something. Well, that, uh... that makes me wonder, though, because I know everybody's quick to be like, yep, we were right, it's shit. But maybe the critics aren't liking it because it ain't woke enough for them. Well, yeah. you know, I've read a couple of the bad reviews so far from a few of the mainstream reviewers. In fact, that was something I talked about in the Six Minute Daily, and the they really they don't like it. But the, kind of for like the same reasons that I may not like it because it's they were there. The question was by one of the reviewer from uh, the reviewer from the Hollywood Reporter was that. Um, did did you guys watch this and and figure out what you were going to do with it going in? Because it doesn't feel like it, you know. And and I that's my concern is like, did these people go in here with the right idea about creating it? And then after we've heard about um, the the lady that wanted to make sure that Faye Valentine looked nothing like oh the designer yeah. it was supposed to be, right. yeah. You know, it's, she didn't it's, want to sexualize her. Yeah, and I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, she's a femme fatale. That's part of the gig. I mean, yep. same thing with Black Widow and so on and so forth. But I thought it was interesting. So I have a feeling that that. That that's that's gonna that there that'll be one of the times the critics and 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 the and the you know the fans are gonna probably agree if that's really they really went in there with no plan and they didn't do it justice then it's not gonna be worth it. Yeah, yeah. I think that the, I think when I was reading about it, I was trying to find comparisons between uh, the anime and what's coming up with the live action. And I couldn't really find many reviewers who were comparing it. They were just basically focused on the, I think one of them called it, uh, it plays more like a cover band knockoff. It's it's not like in that aspect. It, it doesn't, it has the overall aesthetic down, but it's just missing that spark. Oh, all right. Speaking of sparks, we got uh, Jesse Miller joining us as well. Good morning, sir. Hey, Jesse. Hey, how you boys doing? Must not have to work today, or you don't normally work Mondays anyway, do you? No, I'm Tuesday, Saturday. That's right. So how are you doing this morning? 
Uh, you know, I had a nice leisurely morning, you know, a nice coffee, played some games, and just dicking around, really. Coffee's good to wake you up. Uh, wow, Jess, Jesse's going with the uh, I'm growing my Santa Claus beard early no, this year. It's no shave oh, November. Man, I, got, I got to shave this thing, and it's just it's gotten so long that I just it's going to be a pain. And He's going to play Santa it. this year. <laughs> He's going to be Santa. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I got a good head start. Uh, speaking of mornings, uh, Phantom Boomer says for five dollars, "Good morning, nice." I don't have to stay up past bedtime. Yeah, we do try. We do try. Indeed. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, Ula Fanes who says for two euros, "Awesome to see George on the panel. Regular to be." Well, we certainly can try for that. Uh, we'll see what right. your schedule is like, but uh, yeah. He knows he's welcome anytime on Mead, and uh, we work oh, him in here when we so yeah. Well, thank you, Olaf. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Andre. I love it here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, since I have to like pop a little bit in and out, I'm just going to answer this question, which was directed uh, at me from uh, Erik Just, representing Denmark with 100 Dan Danish krona. Question to Andre. Have you seen the old Olsen Banden movies? That's the Olsen Gang. For those wondering, mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, a series of uh, movies, uh, originally Danish movies that were later remade both in Norway and in Sweden separately. So that's just the context. And if so, do you have any favorites among them? Mine is definitely number five to eight. And do you think the movies are still good today? And my answer to that is that I've seen... Uh, I've only seen a couple of the Norwegian ones. I was very young. I'd have to re-watch them. I don't think that the Norwegian movies hold up today, probably. I would imagine that if anyone holds up, it's going to be the Danish originals. Uh, but but I'm not an expert in that. But uh, yeah, Denmark did it first, and they deserve them. So good for them. And with that, I have to pop out a little bit. He Tom. said pop out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the fact that Eternals was uh, almost uh, outdone by uh, the big red dog? I mean, it doesn't get worse um, that. that just makes me think of Chappelle now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of scary for Disney. Uh, so why don't we uh, why don't we start there real quick? Let's get into the early uh, early bits here of the show. We got some box office numbers here. Uh, domestically uh, and uh, worldwide, uh, let's see here. We got domestic numbers here, but we don't have worldwide, but we got the total gross here anyway. Unless you got something better, Mike. No, I, I like this. Go ahead. I, this okay. is one. Yeah, because no, I, I wanted the, I wanted the, uh, well, we'll just bring it up here. So what did it do over the weekend uh, internationally? Can you make it bigger? That's what she said, Mike. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, we're going there. Wow. Uh, all right. So, so far, it's done 281 million. Right. Uh, and following a 71 million opening, it has now made only 27 million. Uh, Domestic weekend. It made less this weekend than it did its first Friday. Right. Yes. So, that is. What was that? 63% drop? Week week weekend week out uh, like, uh, yeah seventy four percent for Friday uh, for Friday fifty and fifty for Saturday and Sunday so yeah it probably evens out around a sixty percent drop I'd imagine yeah. yeah is that their highest drop for Marvel does anyone no. I believe there was another one that was sixty seven percent fall off for Black Widow if I remember correctly yeah but what about Thor the Dark World and the Incredible Hulk uh, well adjusted for inflation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the overall dollars were uh, substantial, and the the the, the, the 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 but I don't know about the fall off. That that's not a number okay. I have up here. Okay. But I do know that adjusted for inflation, the earnings uh, for Thor: The Dark World and and uh, the other bad Marvel film um, oh. were, were better than uh, were better than that. So we'll have to see. I really, you know, I was expecting this thing to fall off seventy percent for the weekend. Right. So. Culture, do you think that uh, Thor Love and Thunder is going to set a new record for fall off? Possibly. <laughs> Talk about Thor. You, you saw, I just, just jumping right back to Cowboy Bebop, Bebop. One of the writers wrote Thor The Dark World. That's why I was like, okay, they really put a good gang together. Well, they're going to have a real, they're going to have a real problem with, uh, we're going to have a real problem with uh, Love and Thunder because if you, emasculate thor no oh, you're gonna yeah. lose you're gonna lose half if not more of your female audience who's going there to see thor 
Now I'm gonna throw this out here. I heard a rumor that like she gets sick and he has to give her power to let her live, and it's like well, one of those well, things. It's, it's like can't... Annie Hall with superpowers. Yeah, if they take it from the comics, that was the whole issue is is the fact that Jane had cancer mm -hmm. and every time she picked up the hammer because, you know, he wasn't worthy of it anymore. She turned into Thor, but every time it did it, when she reverted back, it killed her more. So she was sacrificing herself. The more she used it, the quicker she died. That's how it was in the comics. I don't know what they're going to do in the film. Script Doctor, have you heard anything? This sounds no, really and emo. I don't care. Well, <laughs> that was a good answer. Wow. <laughs> I just think, especially with Natalie Portman, it's not like she's going to have the va 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 voom factor, you know, where she's going to sit there and go, okay, where she's going to draw men into it. She's more just smug. Yeah. Yep. Tom, what do you think? As far as which part? Thor, the. Um, worse than Eternals, based on what you've heard. No, I think it'll do better because it's got Chris Hemsworth. Uh, I know some people weren't a big fan of uh, Ragnarok, but Ragnarok was still more well received than Thor: The, the Dark World. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but this one's gonna have Natalie Portman, Portman in it, winding yeah. it up. It depends. See, here's the thing with Taika Taika Waititi is he can go out there and troll people all day long. I'm not so sure this movie is gonna be. What everybody thinks it's going to be woke um yeah well i mean i'm sure it'll have some woke elements but i'm not so sure it's going to be her taking over the mantle of thor oh. or something like that um we'll see from what i heard it, 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 it she will have a big part of it it's like the whole thing with like her and the cancer that storyline's all there so we'll see um but as far as this box office goes i mean <sighs> it's kind of funny considering because it's not on any streaming service and clifford is mm -hmm. so eternals it's just odd how people how that how so at least black widow it. has the uh, excuse that it was on streaming at the same time right i'd actually like to see how shang chi did compared to it since it since it came out streaming. mike you got that kind of stuff you can bring up i think you know how to do that better yeah i can do that stand by stand by for mike we could, could you imagine if Shang Chi what numbers it pulled over the weekend versus Eternals? I think Shang Chi oh. had like a fifty. Was it fifty seven drop the first weekend culture? It was. It was pretty big. It was. It was substantial. Uh, again, I what's really what's really been happening is if it, it, it's clear that if the audience wants to see something, it's the first weekend, and then after that, you're you're seeing a a fifty percent or greater fall off for every film mm -hmm. now. So it's uh, you know. It is what it is, though. I think I think that's going to be going forward, unless it's a true blockbuster tent pole. I think that's going to be the pattern that we're going to see. Yeah, the only yeah. exception to that I've ever seen in my life was the original Home Alone because I was in the theaters for like nine months. That was insane. Well, yeah, but that was a different time, and like Shang Chi also had no competition for almost a month too. Yep. Yeah. And the oldest Star Wars. What about Star yeah. Wars? It didn't have drop off, did it? We, yes. We, now I'm talking about the original. Oh, the originals? Yeah. No, no, not as much. It actually rose up, I think. The first one yeah. did it. Even right? Force Awakens, didn't it do? Because all the expectation that was built into it. Didn't yeah, it that also it? didn't have like normal drop-offs. Neither did the Avengers, which just like sucked the air out of everything like the next three months. So to answer right. your question, Shang Chi um, had the um, had its opening at seventy five million. A week later, George, you asked if there was a drop-off. There was no drop-off. It actually, um, well, I mean. The drop off wasn't necessarily as significant at uh -huh. all. So, so if you take a look at it, uh, it was doing an average per theater 6,800, 5,300, 5,200. That's its Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wow. We go to a week later. Now, it did crash on Thursday pretty severely, and we, we covered that. I don't know. I mean, it depends. I mean, the six, the 60s, the week to week, I mean, if you look at this drop off, it's 67%, 39, 33, and 57. So it held pretty well. Had some it, I mean, if you're looking for. Better. And then the number I think to look at is your average per theater. Yeah. It's just amazing that such a mediocre movie could pull in this much money overall. <laughs> uh, it's well, brand, man. it's the brand. Yeah. Well, and then you brought up the, the per theater average too, as well, Mike. And that's another thing we noticed is that Shang-Chi had what, like a thousand more theaters than Clifford as well. That's Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi opened up. Shang-Chi opened up with 4,300 theaters. Clifford opened up with 3,700. Yep. And Eternals, how many do you know? Eternals is 4,090. Mm -hmm. 
yeah that uh you know and and when you look at theatrical engagements um you know it's it's uh roughly the eternals is is pacing to have more theatrical engagements because of the number of screens uh by a substantial margin don't so. you think that's odd that they would have more screens for shang chi than they would for eternals which they spent more on well, the problem, um, no, is no, it. no, because because when you have the local screens, you've got the pressure, George, of uh, the fact that we just had Dune come out right before. Yeah, and and uh, a lot of a lot of IMAX theaters kept Dune uh, on one of their on one of their screens. Back over, I had a couple people that yeah. told me that that yeah. they were supposed to be opening Eternals on the big IMAX screens and stuff like that in their local cinema, and they went and changed it back to Dune because they weren't selling enough tickets. Okay. Uh, and uh, it looks like the same thing here is that just nobody's going to see this movie this weekend. So to look for at the win. I, yeah, I have to, I have to, everyone said things. the same thing. They just said uh, Selma Hayek dies in the first 15 yeah. minutes. And yeah. Very well, what were you about saying, that? Uh, yeah, I, I was saying because I've seen Eternals. Who else on this panel has seen the Eternals? I did. Nope. Oh, okay, cool. I did because I did a, re yeah, I did a review on it. So I had to see it. I got yeah. no plans on this one. Yeah, but that's actually interesting because this is the first panel I've been on uh, since uh, since we had Robert Meyer Burnett on where someone actually went to see the movie other than me. Here we are, a panel full of film pundits, <laughs> and, uh, and of this panel of seven, only two has actually seen The Eternals. How oh. kind of an endorsement is that about the movie itself? Yeah, it's torturous, that's why. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saving all my hope and energy for Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, there you go. That was <laughs> my, uh, great. I was going to ask that. How do you think uh, Ghostbusters is going to take a slice out of Eternals? Yeah, big one. Oh, I think it's going to kick its shit in, honestly. Yeah, I we'll think know, that we'll Ghostbusters know actually to like do real numbers like back in the day once yeah. it catches on as long as it catches on but the commercial they're releasing this movie in a week the commercial they have out now it still doesn't show one original ghostbuster it's not enough for the normies to catch they're it doing it on purpose but yeah yeah so but I, like why would they start yeah, but like star trek 2 with Khan. like are they making that mistake with their advertising but would that would be a mistake if they have the original ghostbusters in it they should be showing them by now you'll see it i think i think starting thursday you glimpse on on Thursday, you're going to start to see that kind of thing out there in the world, right? Shouldn't they be I starting so. it today? So everybody... Well, we've already heard their voices in yeah. three different promotions, so we know they're in there. It doesn't matter at this point. You, we already have enough of a dangling it, it, carrot to get people involved. It's just the voices about the faces enough for the normies because we've had this discussion before. Well, I heard some about rumblings now. about this. I don't know if anybody else heard this, but I heard Sony's kind of pissy right now. Because I don't know if they're getting pressure from Disney or what the deal is, but they're mad because they're they're being pushed into all this Spider Man shit right now, and they're trying to promote Ghostbusters, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Disney is pressuring them to to ramp up Spider Man stuff to help Eternals box office. You think they're yeah. doing that to kind That's of hurt Ghostbusters? Works. So Ghostbusters doesn't not so much hurt Ghostbusters, Eternals? but I think Disney is just panicking over Eternals right now. They should be. So, like, they're making this big deal, much to do about uh, the Spider-Man trailer drop dropping on Tuesday. Mm. And I was already hearing a couple months ago that we were going to see the second trailer with Ghostbusters, which mm, wow. basically is what's happening. But they're doing some special event to drop the trailer two days two days earlier. So I think Sony is kind of pissy because they're feeling like that's taking away a lot of thunder from Ghostbusters. It is. You want to see it something would. funny? Check this shit out. So, can you solve my screen for one second? Yeah, I think so here. This was oh. the this was the earnings call for Disney. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's not a, that's not a happy graph. That's a sad no. Graph. That's a brutal graph. And I don't think a, oh my god, what happened? Right and I don't I'm think sure. this weekend's <laughs> box office is going to help it at all. No, when you when they got the financials, you know, when when the financials came out right before the call, right, that's when you started to see that thing go. <laughs> it was incredible. I was like, there it goes in real yeah, time. Yeah, more like a rock. Yeah, like and, usually, usually artificially, it will bump it up like five dollars. And and, and like, when I when I, when I yeah when I checked this morning, Jesse, it was still trending bearish. So I mean, I I was you know I've been trying to pay attention because I'm thinking, okay, well, I, I had some money, and, <laughs> so, and, and you know what? It's like that's one of those stocks that you hold on to if, if yeah. you're trying. I, I dumped I dumped mine, yeah. but um, 
you know, you you're what's the natural state of nature for the Disney stock to be at if they're running the company properly? Right. Well, no one knows. <laughs> well, especially with Chapik and all the problems now. What they, they what did they have? They had Johansson's lawsuit. Then they went into this other lawsuit that they're facing. Then you had the petition, which is uh, just shy of the fifty thousand, where you have the former employees plus everyone else online on Change.org who are calling for Chapik to resign or to be fired by the board. Now, let me ask you guys a financial question because this is different than the movies, but it's under Disney. Disney has a ton of uh, properties, right? Now, through the whole Koof Koof thing, there was the whole thing where people weren't uh, made to pay the rent. Did that hurt Disney? No, because they're not landlords. What they don't have are like uh, buildings where, where people no longer have to pay their rent. So that did not hurt Disney. What hurt them is that Almost all of their assets assumes that people physically go to them, whether it's their hotels or it's their cruise ships yep. or it's or if it's their parks. Yep. They kind of assume that people can unrestricted physically go there. As mm -hmm. long as people can do that, Disney is fine. And they can afford to be as woke as they want at the movies and whatever because the parks will always make everything fine as long as people continue to go in them so that is what hurt them was that people couldn't no longer go to the parks but disney aren't landlords as far as i know mm -hmm. uh, if they if they have some kind of share in uh, in in uh, some black rock or something that has property then that's just a tiny tiny fraction of their portfolio and yeah. there's nothing directly where they are a landlord. Yeah, so not, it seems yeah, it, they're probably more the type that ban, buy up unused land than sell it to subcontractors to build. Uh, well, they have a real estate empire. I, I mean, we don't we don't talk about it a lot, but they do. They it's called the Disney Vacation Club, and you know those are resorts that they build um, that are essentially a, a, a more advanced form of timeshare, and those those real estate investments are you know located primarily in the park locations but they also have they also have a, a one in florida uh, called vero beach uh hmm. near you know the the former dodgers spring training site they which is obviously on the the coast the of florida they have to come up here in a, in a later story but yeah yeah they have they have that oh i didn't know that sorry but yeah they have uh holdings that um uh, they have hilton head they have a location in hilton head uh near our, our North buddy Carolina. and uh they have um they have one in uh, one in uh, California, um, you know, on the Disneyland property. Uh, but they have some they have locations, you know, also that they cooperate with other timeshares. So, yeah. Oh, there it is. Wow. Actually, hold up. I want to I want to correct myself earlier. Here was my exact estimate for this weekend for Eternals. Oh, wow. Seven million three hundred forty six thousand five hundred six. Oh, you want me wow. to take this down, Tom? <laughs> no, but it's like twenty-seven million. Yeah, and so you nailed it. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> I thought I went higher than that, but no, I guess I didn't. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Sorry, I just saw that on Twitter. Here. <laughs> now, if only you could find some place to place bets on this type of thing. And I know we're about to get into finances. I hate to do this, but I got to take a call from work, so I'll be right back, guys. All right. Yeah, there was this one. I don't. You react. Of course, now he's. Would we'll, well, you want me to leave it up, or do? You... Well, we'll leave it down for now, so you can come yeah. back. Because I can't get it to open. Like, it, I can open it, but I can't read the whole story. You have to be like subscribed oh. or whatever. Oh, it's it's the VIP plus thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah uh, Mike's got it. it, so he can he yeah. can we can get to that when we well, get done. You want to do it? Well, yeah, yeah. I need to take a quick call. Be right Go back. ahead and take your call first, oh, then we'll get to that. All right. Yeah. No, it's but but they but like I said, I mean Disney has has real estate holdings as well. I mean they 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 will they will buy property near the parks. They'll they'll do what they want to do with it. They'll they do a lot of land exchanges in Florida so that they can they can get more land uh, to exchange for wetlands that they are you know preserving and stuff. There's a lot to that. Yeah. So, um, but they're they, not landlords per se. No, no, no. So they wouldn't no, be no, affected. No. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. They so wouldn't more be affected more like by uh, flippers. Exactly. Like, like, like their investment in real estate, but that's not affected yeah. by a yeah, ban on like every, Everyone out. wants to move the floor. Do they have to be building subdivisions all the time? Yeah. Price is only going to go up on the land. There's no more of it. Right. Well, I, think yeah. it's, I think Disney between Eternals and the slate of films that it has going, plus 
the way the parks aren't having the same attendance rate with with people unhappy with all the mandates that are required. I think they're in for some bumpy rides. And you just explained, Jesse, just you just showed us the, how their stock is reacting. Yeah. Well, and they well, also have the new Disney cruise thing. And oh, go ahead, culture. No, you're right. I mean, the cruise ships are not are not you know doing what they were doing. They will. They'll get back up to speed. Um, they and of yeah, course, I was, they, they, ask if that was still even in existence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're deep. They're deep in the cruise ship industry now. Uh, with that division, uh, DCL is uh, is is pretty big, and they they they've. I think they just they signed a contract just a few years ago for three new ships, and I think one or two of them have been delivered at this point. Uh, okay. It's been a bit. It's been a minute since I've done the 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 cruise thing. Thing, but are the uh, others sitting out uh, off the coast of California? <laughs> no, because they're, they're they're done in European shipyards, the biggest uh, the biggest shipyards in the world. So, culture. Yeah. What do you think about? Uh, I was reading over the weekend how mm-hmm. they they're still having pushback in Disney from um, people going to the parks over the genie. You know how they started charging it's, for the like, different lanes, how they used to not when they would have the fast pass yeah, lanes. Yeah, the lightning, start, the lightning yeah. lane, yeah. And it, it, the, the goal the goal there was to try to monetize even further, uh, you know, your 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 trip to the park. The problem is is that um, well, they're cannibalizing their own bottom line with people. That's well, but there 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 are people who are up in arms over it. They're like, look, you are you are catering only to the wealthy, and that's that's been it's been tipping that way for a while. It, it started doing that under Iger, but with Chapik again, he's a retail minded guy. Right, but he's um, gone overboard. I think so. I but again, that's these parks for a week is insane. I spent well, thousands of dollars down yeah. for it, and it's just like. Yeah, but what did it's, I really spend Star, money on? Right, but look at the Star Wars experience six thousand, six thousand, basically a night per person, almost or five thousand. Oh yeah, you that know what? Hotel, so they could put some plastic up on the walls. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. Let's jump to this story. Actually, now that I right. brought it up, sounds good. Oh, there Park it is. Park Wars. <laughs> uh, former Universal exec claims yep. Disney swiped rise of the existence idea. That means they're being sued by Universal. Well, it's a uh, it's a, a former executive of Universal company, yeah. which I don't understand how they're suing them. When I was reading it, it was like a, about some technology that yeah. you've seen at many parks. Not this, not well. This specific tech and patent, um, you know, come it comes from this the 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 a former Universal employee. He works for he's the creative lead for uh, Raven Sun. Uh, creative and the it, essentially it is for one one part of the four the four attraction attraction i guess it's really four attractions in one but it's one part of the ride experience when you're actually uh, being jettisoned as the escape pod section right. where it's 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 synced directly with this particular type of technology it syncs directly with the screen in front of people so uh so that while they are descending there's a lot more elaborate motion happening on the screen that is your mind's being tricked into believing you're actually right. having like the forbidden think- journey yeah see more but Do you different. think they're doing it maybe more for marketing? Because the, you think it's a small company can take on Disney? Maybe they want yeah, to get their name out here there. under patent law. Yeah, I mean, in in and, and you know, anyway, that we should probably read from the story. But yeah, when I read, well, I guess it, actually like, we're gonna save this because we got Lorena oh, coming in. Yeah, oh. I like George's point on that though, because uh, Universal is looking to open up that third, that fourth park. All right, in a couple of years now, they might want a little bit of free publicity. Yeah. yeah, it's just because when I was reading it, I'm like, especially the way it, it is in this country with patent law, the little that I know about it, it just doesn't seem like they stand much of a chance, especially when Disney's going to show how uh, they've used similar technology 12 years ago, and I think it was called their Titan Drop or something. Well, well, and there we have perfect timing because there, uh, there, there, there. here she is right now. We just started talking about this, but I was saving it for when you got here, Lorena, and now you're here. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey, everyone. Hey, everybody there in the chat. So, Hello. yeah, it looks like I Disney don't. is facing some uh, legal issues. Yes, and um, I'm not surprised. You probably want to file this under the category of it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, especially when you have a crap ton of money. Like, <laughs> Oh, I hate that. Disney does. Um, this is something that I have some familiarity with. I have a master's degree in engineering. And one of the things that we learned how to do was to write proposals. So for people who don't know what that is, and I'm pretty sure Andre has run into it, um, when a company is trying to make a make versus buy decision, especially when they're not sure if they want to outsource 
outsource a particular technology, they will send out what's called a request for proposal. Mm. And what that is, is it's, hey, um, we have this particular business challenge. So in order to help us out, um, send us a proposal in and we'll review it. And if we want to hire you, we'll pay you to do that. So this particular company, which I believe is called uh, Raven, Raven. Sun, right, Raven Sun Creative. So basically they submitted a proposal that said, hey, we have this patented technology. Here's the details on how it would work to quote unquote, solve your problem. So if you hire us, this is how we can solve your business need. So Disney probably looked it over, said, oh, this is great. Told them, um, yeah, this is great, but we decided we're probably not going to use it. And then tell their folks, we are totally going to use this technology. I mean, what are they, what are they going to do? We can tie it up in court for years. We've got, you know, this Galaxy's Edge that we really, really need to launch our signature traction. We need to do it. Smuggler's Run is not doing it. You know what? We'll deal with the fallout later. Just build it and go. Mm. So Thank that you. is... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Why does everybody got to be slimy? I was just <laughs> say, the thing is, is the difference here between something like a uh, contract dispute... Mm -hmm. or uh, even somebody saying, oh, you stole my story. This is a patent dispute. So there's actual... Like, this there's is legal file. There's legal yeah. filings. And for, to further, to further pr progress this with um, uh, in the favor of the original company, I believe Paramount licensed these guys out to do a couple of their rides before. One that springs up to mind is the James Bond license to Thrill Ride. Oh. That was at a bunch of their parks uh, about 20 years ago. Um, that uses the same type of um, sync synchronizing technology with the seats to the screen. That's a clever name. Yeah, it, it, I, I bet you could probably watch it on YouTube. Yeah, um, oh yeah it, that, that does have a ride video. That does. Yep, POV. So, yeah, like if other companies have shown that they have also agreed to this and that there's a relationship established, that is in the more favor to the, to the uh, plaintiff than the defendant. Exactly, exactly. And the part, the technology that they're talking about that you guys alluded to about the bond ride, they did actually use that. Now, I've ridden Rise of the Resistance, and I actually have footage of this exact portion that they're talking about. This part of the ride, literally, it's it's the best part, mm -hmm. like literally the best part of the ride. I actually have this like up on my channel. So trust me, you won't get struck for it. <laughs> how, how, did, how did it feel? How did it feel? You really enjoyed that? Oh, it was flipping amazing. And yeah. you'll um, hold on. I want to make sure I'm sharing audio because the audio is going to make the difference. So it in does. this ride, pretty much you're going through, you see a couple of things. It's like, yeah, it's cool. It's great. It screens and everything. But when you get to this particular portion of the ride, which is near the end, that is when the riders start freaking out because holy crap, it seems real. It feels real. It's the real time mm. simulation is timed absolutely perfectly, now, and it is shows it, how is crappy it smugglers run. Is it like it. a big IMAX screen, like uh, other no, rides. it's not an IMAX screen. Kind of like um, I want to say like the size of a storage unit, like say maybe eight by twelve, and there's a ride vehicle in here. Yeah. But I'll show you exactly exactly what uh, what happens. So uh, let's see. Hopefully, it's guys it's, it's well it's well well it's well so you're in a separate ride vehicle. You go into this escape pod right here. They lock you in. Okay. You drop like everyone else drops. And you actually feel like you were in the middle of this whole battle here. Okay, you're clear. Everything from the frames per second to the sound to the timing to the physical dynamics. Your came in a all of that is perfectly timed. Ground it feels the wreck. seamless. Absolutely yep. seamless. It doesn't even feel like the rest of the attraction at all. <laughs> Amazing. Yep. Yep. And it, that is that old is technology old that they've just been making better and better every year. And it's, it's and, and, and again, I mean, as, as Lorena will say, this is four attractions. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Oh, I mean, sometimes when Lorena shares like videos, this happens. Yeah, streamer. 
Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So this, 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 this one attraction rise of the resistance is actually four separate attractions. <laughs> they're, oh, all just, yeah. they're all just kind of synced together. So, and that's, that's, I mean, you, that ride vehicle itself is, is just one element of it all. It's very, yeah. it's very well done. I mean, the attraction, it, it does make smugglers run look pretty ridiculous, but at the same time, um, you know, it, we've seen them, we've seen them get in trouble for using other people's stuff. I mean, um, and one of the reasons they, they pulled uh, some of all thrills out of the, uh, of, of Disney world was because the, they didn't license the Kabuto robot robot arms that were used for the uh, forbidden journey over at universal because they had first dibs on that tech too so um, there are only two uh robots now being used in disney attractions in florida the kabuto robot ro- robot arms and they're actually i think both in nemo so there you go uh, i'm not sure jail jail pots must be new here <laughs> <laughs> this is not a chill screen. No, you just came in at the wrong no, spot, my friend. Obviously, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, we were definitely Unless talking there's about pure sarcasm there. That yeah, could be. Yeah, we yeah, were definitely but... talking positively about that one attraction, but no. Well, the... here's the thing: is like you know, these yeah. things cost. We know that the the Star Wars experience still costs like a, a couple billion dollars to build. So, I'm sure these guys that design these attractions, there's co- probably only a handful of them in the world. Mm-hmm. So I got to imagine that, uh, you know, they take this shit very seriously. Yeah. yeah, the thing that I don't get is that, like, it doesn't seem like it's, yeah, it's complicated, but it doesn't seem like it's all that complicated to the people who make these type of things for mm-hmm. a living. I mean, it's not like mm-hmm. this is their first rodeo. I mean, okay, now if you look at the program in itself, it's obviously the same code. It's obviously stolen, or is it someone who rewrote something similar? Because there's going to be a Well, it's not so much the code. I'm sure it's the the mechanism and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that they know what they're doing. Like, you're not going to go after a beast like Disney like this unless you think you've got a good chance. Right. And that's the thing. Disney can afford to drag this out for years. They've got the attraction built. They've got the technology in there. And like I said, it's easier for them to just feign asking for forgiveness than permission. They don't care. The only thing that they cared about was getting this ride out so they could make the money up as soon as possible. They still haven't made it up by having this ride out there in existence. So it really doesn't surprise me that Disney did this, even though it's at the pat- there's a patent on this technology. Yeah. They just thought they'd get away with it, probably. That well, is now, exactly how, how does the How does the ride itself function? Does it have a crane arm, or is it on a track, or is it what's new? It is trackless. Wow. Yeah. Like okay. Culture was saying, there's four parts to the attraction. There's yeah. one where you rock in, and there's like a dynamic simulator. I'm trying not to mm-hmm. spoil things too much. Yeah. One part that's a dynamic simulator. One part that's pretty much like a stage that you go into. Mm -hmm. Then you get into a trackless vehicle. By trackless, that means it's not, you know, it's not on a not on a track at all. It moves um, independently. The joke, not really a joke, but it actually happened. One of the delays for Rise of the Resistance was because they put the track in upside down. Yeah, they put the 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 lead wire. It was buried in the concrete. They put mm-hmm. it, they put that oh. in, in one of the parks. They put it in upside down. Upside That's down. Just got wow. expensive. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it Ex- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you're in this trackless Oops. ride and it's very cool because it's not synchronized at, at all. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Hmm. So the cars are independently moving by themselves. They move around. Hmm. Then you get into this escape pod. And again, it's like you're locked into a high quality real time simulator. Mm -hmm. Everything is perfectly timed together. And like I said, there's the big difference between this one and the one in Smuggler's Run. It is this one was done extremely well. The effort, Mm -hmm. you couldn't tell the difference really between what your eye was seeing and what you felt. It gives you that feeling like you're actually Mm -hmm. in the motion. And Smuggler's Run, it just was like a really bumpy carnival ride. I was going to say, I've never been on these rides, but just from my understanding, like, let's say the difference between something like Star Tours, which was just basically something on like a gimbal where you would go left, right, forward, back Mm -hmm. and side to side. Mm -hmm. That's all you could really get out of the movement from my memory. Right. This is what you're saying. This is a situation where you have basically like complete 360 control over the movement. So it's probably built on a circular thing and you Mm -hmm. probably have the four cars at different levels to where they have like you know, different degrees of motion that they can do while they're going around. And it's probably not a full circle. It's actually probably an oblong to where you don't feel the, the movement of a circle, well, right? In in this particular case, and if you've experienced the Tower of Terror attraction in Florida. I've never been to any of these fucking oh, okay. things. Um, yeah, they- 
they, they, they have a they have a point at which the elevator car that you're in and that attraction actually moves out of the elevator and yeah, travels. That's what I'm saying. Like it's got to be on like arms, yeah. like you were saying, yeah. and then like you have multiple levels to it. Is what I'm. I, I'm probably doing a piss poor job of explaining. Yeah, but in my head, I see it. I mean, what it reminds me of is a virtual roller coaster where it was kind of yeah, like a pivot with a barbell yeah. shape on it with a counterweight and then the car. But but yeah, but is, so but when you get better... so close. So it but feels it is, like full 360 you, motion, yeah. Yeah, it, it does. And plus, it's it's much smoother, and it's true 360 vision. Plus, you actually have a true integration of the Y-axis as well, which makes wow. all yeah, very much of like the movie. difference um, in, in the world. <clears throat> So it's it makes you feel like you're there. You're actually yeah, it's, in it's it. Absolutely. Also, yeah, I can't. I can't stand when people don't invert their Y axis because then it's not like a plane. Well, it also is an elevator. I mean, that's the other thing. At the same yeah. time, it's taking you down. I mean, most there, there's this attraction is really weird. There is a multi. It's multifaceted in a way that I don't think people get. But it it, it, it it's All very right. cool. But at the same time, understand this isn't the this isn't the this isn't even it, Disney got sued five to six years ago by the company to develop the trackless tech that is used in the uh ratatouille attraction in paris okay this is was sent to me by six this is from raven sun's thing this is kind of what i was figuring it would look like right here that's what i was oh, saying yeah. not an exact circle sense. but like yeah so you move that around the cars counterweight each other exactly yeah so exactly yeah it, you get slid oh, you know you go in here. one track goes in one one yep. goes in the other one goes in the other like you all go to your own quote-unquote escape pods that's how they wrap yeah. it up yeah, mm -hmm. I can see how this is pretty much how I was picturing it working here, even yep. though I've never been on these things. But yeah, see what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, instead so of it's you just an getting, elevator, yeah, kind of like their culture was has other motions, though. Right. And like, like yeah. Jesse was saying, you have the other ones to counter the other ones. So, like, when it feels like the ones going forward, it feels like you're tipping yeah. back and, mm. forth and so on. You know, I love it. I love rides, man. Yeah, roller well, coasters, I mean, scarier the better. Make me feel like I'm gonna die. It, <laughs> and in this case, that these are forward-facing versions of this. Now, and yes, another, this may be, and yeah, Rogue Disney, it is different. I'm sure this is just one of, this is the... It's very the similar. It, well, it's, See, it reminds me kind of the Simpsons ride, but those are more stationary, but it... Mm. Well, it's the same. It's the same kind of concept, Jesse. I mean, like for example, um, the the there's another attraction in the parks that's actually based on the Pandora's box ride system, which is a which is another one that's being used in multiple ways around the world, called um, uh, Flight of Passage, which is the Avatar uh, yeah. attraction, and that's based on the the Pandora's box uh, concepts, but it utilizes uh, some of the tech from the Tron coaster as far as the seating goes, that's and cool. it utilizes um, it uses utilizes text. Uh, tech that they use for um soren the soren attraction you know soren over california soren over the whatever so it, that's a combination of like three different ride elements mm -hmm. that they put together for that attraction it works beautifully there but again that's all tech that they've worked with or developed themselves before uh but this isn't like i said this is like this i think this is the second time in the last five uh, six five to eight years somewhere in there mm -hmm. that they're being sued by a patent holder over their use of their technology. Yeah, because it seems kind of odd because it seems like one of those things that yeah. rides have progressed with a certain evolution to them. Yeah. And that I would assume that all the big boys use the same tips and tricks and toolkit. Well, that's where I was going to, Jesse. Well, yeah. well, to a point, that's where I was going to, Jesse. There's probably only a select handful of guys who, who do this stuff. And I don't yeah, because I mean, when's the last time you see an ad in the paper for amusement park ride designer? Well, right. it, well it's true. It's like they, they are. When it comes down to the technology and the software, basically it's like, here's our, you know, here's our uh, white label or standard of what we can do. And then, you know, we write your proposal to refine that, to make it into what it is that you want to use. That's a common practice. But Jesse, you're right. There's only a handful of people really who know how to do this. Yeah, because you basically got to be like a an engineer. And yeah, but just designing yes. it is one thing. Putting it together is a completely different animal, too. I mean, like, it's got to be a tight knit family. You can't it, trust. You can't trust day workers to do this. Well, and I think that's right. kind of the case, Jesse. And I think yeah. that's how these guys found out about this because Six was sending me some stuff last night, and mm -hmm. so it does sound like these guys know each other behind the scenes. So. It and they, is, um, they had been commenting on a few things about Disney here in, in recent yeah. times, too. So I'm sure they're well aware of what they're using. Yeah, and they really, probably got, what's it going to be, like 100, 200 people in the country who work is, on this type of stuff? Well, if it, that, is a very, it is a very small community, even in Orlando area itself. Mm -hmm. When I was doing work mm -hmm. in real-time simulation, that's a yeah. very small community. 
yeah. group of people. It's like how many brain surgeons are there in the world this, who are at the top? It's just yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. yeah, it is. Well, and when these when you're talking about these high level Imagineers, I mean, there's a handful of these guys, right? And they they when they when they get uh, Disney sloughed off a bunch of talent in the last few years, mm-hmm. um, and they went on to work for other people. I mean, you know, big big time minds. They 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 sloughed them off, and they went on to do other things that are amazing for other companies. Um, in fact, outside of the amusements uh, category, I know a few of these guys. So it's just, it's one of those things. It's like, I'm assuming it's a pretty have... tight knit community. Like it they is. Is all very, very. Yeah. They, I mean, even well, if you're like not when you say 200, for... I think it's probably less than that. Oh, it's way less than that. that. Yeah, I'm talking about the guys who actually assemble the shit too. Oh well, yeah, they probably crew with a lot of muscle. Yeah, but that, that comes down to the individual company. Like Sally will send out their their instru- their their installation team to do like one of their amusement. I was going to say, if somebody's putting shit yeah. in upside down and backwards, that means you're handing somebody the yeah, instructions. Yeah, some they're doing it wrong. Right. Yeah. right. Some, There's some like raven- a certain group of group of people. Let's yeah. just say when I used to work for Stark Industries, yeah. that was something specialized when they'd have um, simulators installed for certain branches of the military. That was a specific skill set that you had in a specific group that did that. Yeah. Well, you know, I say wiring is not a hobby. Working on military stuff is definitely not a hobby. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, I mean, Luffy, you're right. The Imagineering group, they come from a, uh, a they're a multidiscipline organization outside of Disney. Mm-hmm. But Disney's been sloughing off their their legendary Imagineers and they go to work for other companies. They go to work for Sally, Sunraven, all these other all these other companies. Virgin that's, uh, that, Galactic. They, that's where yeah, Joe Virgin Rogue Galactic. Went. Yeah, exactly. You're 100 percent right. Yeah. You know, you and I know who that is. But mm-hmm. there, there's a lot. There's they, they still keep contact with each other. You know, well, like I mean, in like any field, they're gonna have the yeah. same familiar yeah. well, situation. Wanna, now, let, can I ask a question now? Like the original old group of Imagineers that basically create all the cool shit at Disney. Um, where where was the common background of these people besides engineering? I mean, like there has to be some other facet that made them pick that guy or that woman. Well, the Imagineering kind of goes born out of out of the animation discipline. To originally, these these are referred to as the nine old men. But th- these people develop like Walt would ask somebody to do something, and Bob Gurr, who Lorena knows, uh, he he every anything that is motion like that there's like. I and guess didn't they basically have to create like classes and he, stuff for people to learn how to build these things for and, Walt? And and they pulled. I just think about it. There's like over 200 disciplines, different kinds of disciplines along, you know, art and 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 engineering and all these other fields that mm-hmm. they pull into the Imagineering group. That's and I mean, so. Yeah. Yeah, and so like you, you know, you had Mary Blair who was responsible for the look and feel of a lot of things that are that you're surrounded by at Disney, right? She was a, she was an incredible decorator, but she participated in multiple set dressings for attractions. You have, like I said, Bob Gurr is responsible for almost every single early motion concept that came out of Disney, from the Wedway People Mover to the original monorail. Uh, he was responsible for making. Well, the and trains. I know they're also uh, the, the, the 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 Imagineers were also responsible for a lot of the. Uh, animatronic technology that we have today yeah because the hall of presidents but what came first the monorail or the presidents uh lincoln uh i think lincoln uh, the great moments with mr lincoln when it premiered at the world's fair uh again a lot of these world's fair attractions like the the people mover Mm -hmm. and and the the, you know those those moments they 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 premiered like uh well uh, small world small world premiered at the world's fair and those those attractions were built and went into the world's fair but when they came out of that they moved to disneyland so um but but just just consider that all these all this tech came out of uh, like a handful of minds and then those man's kind of minds kind of expanded along the way to create all this the, the great physical themed entertainment stuff that obviously i'm in you know yeah well to kind of um add a little bit on also onto what culture was saying with imagineering again that's many different disciplines and what it is is basically the integration of art along with engineering so you may have someone who their whole thing is just visual you know, with color theory and how sets are lit. You may have someone who's more into physics with the motion of the mm-hmm. different cars. It's a lot of different disciplines together because what Art want, what Walt wanted to do was to have a group specifically to produce experiences, not necessarily rides, because Imagineering is also responsible for parades as well, um, construction as well, to produce something that isn't seen anywhere else. 
And that's the and that's the gist of it. And they kind of compare things. Imagineers that got let go from Disney. That's why Islands of Adventure at Universal looks so amazing. The oh, Wizarding okay. World of Harry Potter. That's well, classic Imagineering right there. It's kind of like Citizen Kane, you know. Mm. Buy up all the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, but the I don't want problem I do have with these theme parks though is like the Harry Potter, for instance. You go in there and it's like it's not like the movie, it's just, just a bunch of shops with the same stuff in them. Then they have good ice cream, then you're like happy with it and you move on. <laughs> what part did you go in? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like when you go into like the, anything, Weas the Weasley's so toy shop. Like if, if you go into the Weasley's toy shop. In the movie, it's like three floors, and you can walk around. There's all this wacky, zany shit all over the place, and you go into the one in there, and it's like around a center counter, and then it's like into a candy store. And it's like, what, what the hell? You missed an opportunity here. This is just going to be the centerpiece. Well, if they did that, then it's going to cost like probably five thousand bucks to get in. <laughs> well, I don't want to. I don't want to switch gears. <laughs> Practically on. already does. I don't want to switch gears too much, but I want to grab some super chats, and then we have some more Star, uh, Disney Star Wars news I want to jump into uh, that actually just came across uh, across my desk here. That's I, I wouldn't call it necessarily breaking news, but it's it's stuff that's been uh, been uh, discussed lately, and it kind of. Uh, adds to some fuel to the fire of things that we've heard as well. Um, but Andre, what do we got for some super chats we can catch up on here? Yes, absolutely. Uh, going back to some of the classic super chats, I'm trying to scroll, but uh, I'm just going to go straight into the repository. Uh, then we have uh, Phantom... Uh, no, actually, I'm going to have to refresh here because I just got, uh, got caught on all of that. That was up to where we were. Give me one second here. Uh, we have um, uh, our good friend and my fellow countryman, Jace Fox, who says for 22 Norwegian Krona, hail to the good buds on the panel. And mm, says for $4.99, hi, gents. Hello, everyone. And Joachim Stark says for another 50 Swedish Krona. I am spending what would have been my eternal tickets on Super Chats. Hail, Midnight's Edge in the morning. Oh, thank you, Joachim. And I do feel that you'll probably get more entertainment from this than you would have Eternals anyway. So, yeah, money well spent. Uh, Darius Minchhausen sent us a $1.49 Super Sticker. And then Christian Coralejo uh, sent us a, a pertinent question. For $5, if you guys had a bunch of money and total control over the parks, how would you personally improve the rides and the overall park experience? You ever see that episode of South Park where Cartman buys a theme park? Yes. All Kicks everyone out. That would be me. <laughs> that was classic. Oh, having a good time. The exclusivity factor. Oh. God damn it. I'll let, one all right, all right. I'll let four one. people in today. <laughs> Oh, you know what I would do? You know how like you got all these parks and there's like a lot of area. I would make uh, roller coasters that like much like the Ron monorail idea. It would get you from one area to another. Yeah, but it'd be a roller coaster, so it'd be cool. No, I have I have nothing to really add to the to the whole thing because I've never really been to any of these parks. But somebody who has is drunk three PO, and he's in the in the chat. How you doing, Jay? Uh, yeah. Hey, Jay. Yeah. Jay's, Jay's, uh, people get to go do this I see stuff he did a video time. on the uh, lawsuit yeah. as well, I believe. So uh, yeah, he did. He check did. that Part out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, culture, you want to go? About which? <laughs> yeah. What would you do with all the money in the world to fix up? Uh, what was the question again, Andre? Fix the theme parks. So, wow. like, if you could do what you wanted in the parks, what yeah. would you do? Fix it. All right, look, there's okay, there's so many issues right now. Um, you know, it, depending upon which park you're in around the globe. Um, first and foremost, I think, uh, if you talk about Florida specifically, you replace the fleet of monorails. Um, you look at you look at the tech that they invested into a the the Skyliner and realize you made a mistake and should have gone with the people mover version of the tech. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to um get a fifth park put in a fifth actual theme park put 
there, a fifth gate. They need it desperately. Um, you need to uh, reinvest in edutainment properties like you did before. Try to reimagine what tomorrow will be. That's the problem. You know, when they say reimagining tomorrow, they stopped imagination at Disney uh, 25 years ago. I mean, outside of some tech, you know, tech stuff and, you know, acquiring IPs to build attractions around. If you look at, if you look at, um, at Epcot, wow. Drunk's like, no. When you come in That's here and cool. tell them what you what? do, drunk. No. Yeah. Hey, look, look, right now you are, you are, they are, they've abandoned the principles at Epcot that that thing was based around. It was the imagination of tomorrow in World Showcase. Um, and they stopped, they stopped investing in that. And, and so now in, in, in now in, in future world and World Showcase in, in future world, you're ending up with attractions like, um, Cosmic Rewind, which is based on Guardians of the Galaxy. There's no education. They actually have a now. place called Future World. Yeah, well, it's not there Epcot. anymore. Yeah, it's um, the future they world. totally got rid of that. They do realize that was the sequel to West Westworld. Right? Westworld, yeah. <laughs> I don't cool. know, but that was the park was built in two phases. I mean, or, or for in, in two Shit different ideas. Didn't go any better for Future World <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I would I would fix the descent, uh, and, and, you know, and, and and abandon this idea of of what they're doing with the inside of Spaceship Earth. I mean, I could go through each attraction and tell you what is wrong no, with it now. Not, but it didn't used to be well, that. Well, something going to correct you is Mr. Oh, Jay. 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 What's up, Jay? Hey, Jay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to crash your party. No, you did. Good, right? Hey, Jay. <laughs> well, you had yes, an opinion, you did. so I, there's you still room for two more people. I think you're on park hopping, so I think you're a bit of an authority on. You're this. Yeah. I don't know if I'm authority. I I disagree with culture on the Skyliner. I love the Skyliner. Okay, that's probably one of my favorite things to do there. Right, because you can. What people don't realize is that you can park somewhere and ride the Skyliner without buying a ticket mm -hmm. and explore the boardwalk and other things as well mm -hmm. at Disney without having to purchase a ticket right? and enjoy some of the restaurants and some of the other things and ride the boats. There's a lot of things you could do without spending money on a ticket. And the Skyliner is one of them that will take you to different resorts that you can experience without buying a ticket. Uh, I agree. Well, what I what I was saying, Jay, is instead go with the original concept. Instead of the Skyliner, use a, a people mover that would actually employ the technology that you would never you you would just essentially push the button for your final destination. You'd never have to leave the car you were on. You would also have a side problem. That's a go huge ahead. problem, though, because people will just ride it to ride it. That's why sure. they put the Skyliner in. Which is so basically people that really need to move to to get to their next spot. They'll just you'll have a bunch of people on there pushing buttons to sure. ride it to just to go everywhere. And it clogs up the whole, mm. it clogs up the whole Good system point. is, Good is point. why they, that's just, that that's just one of the things I, I, but you can like, uh, they're starting to open up the resorts now to people, which is, uh, which is really nice, especially Christmas time. I know Lorena has been there, but, uh, going to, the, like the, Flo the Grand Floridian, they made a giant gingerbread house uh, that people oh. can explore and buy stuff. Like it's 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 that's really neat. But um, yeah. as far How's as it? fixing the theme parks, it's just to me, it's like it's all it comes down to money. I yep. think they charge too much for parking. They charge too much for a lot of things. But there was a great article that came out in Reader's Digest two years ago that I keep quoting, basically saying there was an insider, <clears throat> not an insider, some of that worked. That was on the board that's not there anymore. And he just said, Disney, this is Disney, not Universal talking or Legoland. But Disney, um, Disney's purposely going to raise prices on everything yep. to for crowd control purposes. Yep. Basically, if you can't afford it, you won't go. And if you're very rich, you'll have a better experience and spend more money. Even though that looks good people. on paper, that just takes away the principle of what well, Walt Disney would have just loved that idea. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I got a, I got a scoot actually. All yeah, right. Lorena. Well, thank you, Lorena, yeah, for yeah. hopping in yeah, here. Uh, we appreciate minutes. your time. No, no problem. Um, just to answer the quick question, what I would do to fix the parks, get oh. back to providing authentic experiences that are oh. worth the amount of money you yeah. charge. I don't care really how much you charge. You're giving me a great experience. If you get me to the point where I say, shut up and take my money and I don't feel screwed over for that, then right. that'll work. Disney used to give you those types of uh, experiences. Valley. And one bone to pick that I do have to do with the Skyliner, I can't go directly from my resort 
like say the pop century directly to Hollywood studios. I have mm -hmm. to stop in that hub at the Caribbean beach resort. Yep. And that's kind of a pain in the ass when you have like, say several kids with you or other people with you or elderly people with you. That is a time suck. It, it, it is, it is. And that's, oh, that's just kind of my, Hey, you know, you like me because I'm, I'm going to disagree with her. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I know and, what she's and, talking and, about. I like, I like to uh, be very yeah. efficient about moving around. Yeah, well, and it's, that's, yeah. it's just, I mean, I can, I can see that they probably made that decision, but I'm just saying it's, well, it's made that decision. and it's okay. not, you know, and it's, it's really not, it's not the best. If I'm at my resort, I want to get from my di resort directly to the well, Lorraine is saying is we all want a happy ending. Really, yeah. Y'all <laughs> said that I did not say that. No, but we will see you later on tonight on Toxic Femininity. Of course, I gotta so go, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Lorraine on her channel as well. And Toxic Femininity starts tonight at 7 p.m. Central, right? Still that time. 7 p.m. Like Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yes, indeed. That is correct. But uh, so just to play devil's advocate, the reason why they have that place at the Skyliner, it's kind of like Grand Central Station. Mm -hmm. It's the center hub where you get off and then you could choose where you want to go. If you want to go to Hollywood Studios, Epcot, the Boardwalk or anywhere else. So it's it, it's needed. You just can't have one like you just can't. I mean, I get people have if if you don't want to go through that hub, you could all, they, they have multiple other ways to get to the resorts you want to go to mm -hmm. uh, bus transportations and everything else. Is the Skyliner perfect? No, but I'm just saying if if. If you want to take kids to Disney and do stuff without spending money, that's a great alternative. <laughs> so basically, to, uh, this, park this, is somewhere how, this is how it rolls for me. You get X amount of time is when, uh, or X time is when the park opens, right? Right. So is this thing open beforehand? It's the open. Night, yeah, it's open like hour to go through. And be there uh, it's like two hours before open. and two hours after. Well, that's so, okay. well, that's good. That's if good. it's working, this is the other problem. If it's working, lovely. Uh, it hasn't had an issue. <laughs> Somebody was just saying the skyline's months, supposed to go so. down, but yeah. Well, it, it it Jay, when hurricane season and thunderstorms roll around regularly, have, does it operate then? Uh, no. I've been in it during major thunderstorms, and I've even had video on park hopping. It was okay. quite the ride. Right. Jay, have you tried <laughs> out? Or, I'm not uh, trying to like. I'm not no. trying to come in and counter everyone's uh, argument for people to be like, no, but it's so negative. But no, no the but problem is, it's like it. We could we could shit on the parks all day long. Yeah. Of course, we could find things. What Lorena was talking about, the wow factor, the bang with your buck. Uh, it, what even if even though I can't stand the rise of you know the sequel trilogy, the rise of the resistance ride is mm -hmm. something incredible that everyone should That's experience. What I was about to ask you, I yeah, how was that? I've done that multiple times, and even people that hate the sequel trilogy get off that thing and go, wow, wow. that's yeah. unbelievable. What the problem about, is, the problem with the wow factor is, is that there's, you, you're going to wait three hours just to do that. Yeah. Right. So, like, that's the problem. Like, I don't know how well, you I fix those. Yeah, I don't know how you fix that. So, it's, it's, um... When your fast pass ain't no good here, it's just like move there ain't on. no yeah. So move they on. they also like, did away with fast passes. Now you pay individually. It's like a mm. circus circus ticket type mm. thing. Um, so I don't know what it's going to be like on busy days, but uh, Lorena is right. They, so the does problem that mean with that every, Disney does that mean that every ride you have to swipe a card? Uh no, Disney has moved yeah. everything towards app. Oh. So yeah, that genie, yeah, that's about the Disney genie. Yeah, you're not, so, you're not clogging up the line waiting for people. Like right, so if you want anything like ordering food, dinner, res, you have to go through the app, which mm -hmm. is right now it's extremely confusing for even for me who's tried. Like I'm, a, I like uh, I'm good. Um, it's <laughs> until they they work some of the bugs Dis out. Disney yeah. IT is terrible. So Jay, I, I, are you, are you I agree. Look, have you looked at that Star Trek uh, Star Wars experience? That forty eight uh, hour immersion. Hotel. Yeah, did anybody want to sponsor me to to go there one night? It's only six grand. Yeah, it's I actually eight nights. Why don't you just go down? Why don't you just Tom, order some white plastic? Honestly, dude, I would love like to, that. but that's probably about half of what I make in a year. So <laughs> a little bit, it's a little bit more than that, but still, like, no, it, yeah. That's... Have you heard anything about it, Jay? Oh yeah, big time. Um, are people liking it, or because I keep reading it, that people are complaining about the price and what they so get for it's, it? They it's it doesn't open till March of next year, but 
they opened up reservations and it like the first month's already booked out. So for some, they're some... actually booked out for about four months. But yeah. well, that's because people are obsessive. Uh, yeah. four months. I just was checking yesterday. I think I can. I could still get a two night. Yeah. Uh, this month, the first month it opens. Okay. Maybe I maybe because I have reading, an annual pass. Because I keep reading, people are saying like, for what you get, the money. You know, when they were going to when they're going to book, it's just outrageous. How much did this thing cost, by the way? It's uh forty eight hundred dollars for a minimum. You have no, to no, stay no, no. a minimum minimum, minimum of how much did it cost to build? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're talking billions. Well, that's what I'm curious was, about, yeah. Yeah. Because I know they're a great job. They're gonna I have an that. idea of what they'll make, but it that here's the thing too. It as much as I personally complain about Disney parks and why they're charging too much. They're always packed. So as much as we sit and complain, and that goes for me too, saying, mm. oh, they've lost the magic here. They've lost this. No one will ever use the Genie app. It's too expensive. No one will ever stay there. They're always packed. Okay. They're always packed. Genie, Genie's being used right now by one third of park guests, according to. Yeah. Well, here's the of thing, course. though. Is I'm just doing... saying, though, it's all every time I go, though, it's, it's you so know. There are people it, who are, constant, who are going to pay and who are going to enjoy. That's people that are going to. Go into massive debt it's just to go there. More of, yeah, I was going to say, it's becoming more of an elite experience, though, it over is. time. That's what it feels like. Yeah. And, well, but the, it's always packed, right? Every time, I, like, even in this, like, uh, the, and, and this Christmas, they're expecting something so, like, the they're expecting from December 1st till January 5th that all the theme parks are going to be so packed uh, that the that Florida might even, like, lift a couple things where they can actually cram more people in there like wow. pose a number because because last year you know we were all locked in our homes and nobody traveled and florida's like i guess considered a free state and with all that stuff so we were already getting the notice like uh, the hotels are pretty much booked up well, and they, yeah you know, all right it's not even thanksgiving yet yeah. and they're already having staffing issues on top of that all. Just exactly. Like, yeah, you're absolutely yeah. correct. Like yeah. huge staffing problems. And yeah. that, but that, and that goes all the way around. Like they want to hire yeah. people, but nobody wants to work. No, and not for what they're paying, you know? So sorry, are, are they, do you have to wear a mask all throughout the park now, Jay? Uh, no, Universal, Legoland, SeaWorld, all these others, you don't have to wear a mask at all. Disney right now is requiring you to wear a mask if you go inside. Hmm. But mm -hmm. we believe that that's going to be lifted they, before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because the they just saying that it's just the uh, the number of tickets that they've sold um, this for December and Christmas time is 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 skyrocketing compared. Mm -hmm. I guess because everybody was just home and like they're like they saved they up the year. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like one of those um, things. SDR Red Wolf on that note speaks on the app and says lunch dinner through app. Did Disney steal this from Singapore or Tokyo restaurants? Or did they find an old article where a restaurant used an Atari 8-bit computers for ordering food? <laughs> well, well, considering they're in the, <laughs> in the business of stealing shit, who knows? Well, since, uh, you yeah. know, I, since uh, the development of the NGE, people. Um, you know, they, 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 they kind of leaned heavily into the, you know, this app idea and they just keep building upon it. So they, you, you used to be able to book restaurants 180 mm -hmm. days out and you, you did that through the website and then they developed a, a more efficient way to do it through the app and then they started to you know grind that down to doing you know uh, online ordering uh for you know uh quick serve restaurants and stuff like that so and then obviously during the global crisis we just went through they leaned towards everything being pre-ordered through the app for a little bit of time and it was a it was a hot mess but you still you, yeah i think right now even at Zatuli, aren't you still having to pre-order before you even get there yeah anywhere yeah. you go now for someone like myself who's goes there because it's part of my job like they uh i could f i know how to do it really quickly so it's like i know i, I kind of like all right i know i'm gonna eat around one let me get on the app and order my food it'll be ready for me when i pick up so like i could make it look easy but when i when i hang out with like the force of light girls were there right with me not too long ago and it was like you got to order your food on, and they were just like lost as lost yep. can be <laughs> and that's very common. They're just like, well, how do I get this? Well, you got to go to the app. Well, you got to do this. You got to do that. And it, and it's, it's actually less convenient. They they sell it as a convenience, but it's actually less convenient. Yeah. You used to be able to walk up to places and eat. 
Yeah, exactly. But you, I, I don't understand. You can't literally walk up and just sit down because the last time I went was seven years ago where you could just go and sit and have a meal. That's mm-hmm. not allowed anymore? No, no it's like when I just went to the Marshall, they had a, a really easy system. Like I was at the Hard Rock, so I just had to text the front desk with uh, the restaurant I wanted and they'd give me the times and I'd pick one. Okay. Yeah, that well, Universal is completely different. Universal's it handles their business much better. But I'm with drunk. I'm, I'm still I'm, making I'm, you use an app in that fucking uh, Harry Potter restaurant, though. The one everybody likes was that. Uh, not so much. Like some of the nicer restaurants have gone away. Like you can walk up and yeah. reserve. Yeah. And uh, they they started to open up lines at Universal that where you, it's appless line mm-hmm. where they're like, did you well, order on the good. app? No. All right, then go in this line here. Yeah, mm, but that yeah. line is very long. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, everybody wants the old fashioned. <laughs> on the yeah. part note Not here, funny. Kaiju Gabriel sends in five dollars. Says, "How about actually building Beastly Kingdom as an addition to a park or separate okay. park entirely?" The story behind that idea is sad. Yeah, and you're not going to get what you want. And the development of the Zootopia part of the park is going to further. Uh, you know, take away the land that they could have expanded upon to do something like that. Don't get me started. I don't even want to get into it. So. Uh, beastly land, beastly, beastly kingdom beastly was kingdom. supposed to be the expansion at uh, Animal Kingdom. Oh, uh, uh, I, I have some top secret news. Oh, yeah, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> sure. At Universal Studios, where they used to do a show called Fear Factor is now going to be demolished and it's mm. going to be part of the Epic Universe expansion. Mm. They haven't announced that yet, but a couple of the theme park channels uh, got the leak information as just like I did too. And uh, mm. they're really moving quickly now to get Nintendo World built, which <laughs> they're le- they're learning from all the mistakes big, over at yeah. Japan uh, to make sure that it's... I, just I think hope Nintendo that World gets bigger because, yeah. like, the Springfield area is not big enough. Well, they have a whole other section where they're gonna they're gonna. Yeah, I, I seen the map, go. but uh, I heard about uh, Nintendo. But besides that, what else are they gonna have? You get any leads on that? The only other thing that I was talking to somebody last time I was there is like they're still whether the, because. Universal still has the contract of Marvel and Simpsons, mm-hmm. even though Disney owns it. But there's been a lot of whispers saying that Disney wants to take it back. So yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. That could be uh, who knows what can happen. The Universal has like an unlimited contract for those IPs. Um, so it would be interesting. Isn't it was similar with the Marvel characters too, Jay. Or? Well, that's the thing. It's like. It it wouldn't be a hard switch over if they wanted to expand on their own personal IPs, and it might even do them better to get rid of some of Disney's IPs. And I mean, like The Simpsons, everybody knows The Simpsons, but they, you know, they're not as popular as they used to be. They've kind of run their course, you know. And well, and it's it's it, there's also been this talk for a while that they're going to get rid of the ET attraction as well. So. That whole back end. Uh, I'm surprised about that because that's their oldest existing uh, ride that's still there. It's going to be interesting. The mm-hmm. pan the pandemic really changed a lot of how well, they got they got two stinkers in that park, and it's the Men in Black ride and the Fast and the Furious ride. But men in suck. Men in Black is they can do an easy overlay fix of. There's a lot of other they, they properties they could fix it. lean into. Fast well, and the Furious another- is the worst ride I ever created. It is. It is. <laughs> It's terrible. Yo, know, you're in Fast and the Furious, right? So you think you're going to be like a car ride, right? No, you're getting no. a bus. <laughs> with like video, with like Let's video camera on the screen Fast on the either furious. side you're moving. It looks like you're uh, watching a bigger version of Cruising USA. That's a, is exactly that what they did? Is just right. refit the speed ride or something, or what? It, it is terrible, dude. Is if they movies. made the speed ride, that would make so much more sense. They, they screwed it up so badly. I mean, they waste again. That is, think about how much space that occupies. Drunk, that you mean physical I space? I mean, I'm like, tear that thing out. Put something in there. It's good. Put two things in there. I always wondered why they didn't put the uh, jaws into the center area because they never well, they closed jaws that. down all but in one. Yeah, park, exactly. they now, Jay. Uh, jaws jaws is completely gone. Oh, yeah, is it? Oh shit. Yeah, but the the hard rumor is. That they're taking all the classic rides for like Back to the Future, the old King Kong, and Jaws, and they're gonna put it in the epic universe. 
um, where people can go like back in time and experience some of the rides that they had before since they have yeah. them there. It's like I VR, like AR story. concept, right? Because I'll be honest with you. I've never been to any of these things, but like the old Kong ride and the old Jaws ride and stuff like that were some of the main reasons why I, ever, I would ever want to go. Well, that, uh, I agree with you. Yeah, that's why I think they should take that uh, Jaws ride and put it right in the center because it looks like they'd be doing shows in there in the, like that little. Well, that lagoon used area. to get yeah, yeah that lagoon used to get a, it used to get a lot of a lot of use for various things. I mean, it, it would. I mean, they could From definitely. What I know of the history, did culture of the Jaws cut his ride, hair. Yes, yeah. he did. What You're, the oh, freak, you bro? You you need to go watch the video on my channel, Jay. Um, well, I, I've been in Georgia oh, shooting you guns. Reveal why you do <laughs> oh, that I know, dude. Stuff, but say you it just to keep it healthy? Wait, you're in Georgia shooting guns? I you was. Know. I was flying in helicopters well, and shooting guns. And I know wow. the one Jaws ride was gone, but I thought the one in Florida or whatever was still around until a couple of years ago. But no, the, no, the guy who worked there told me that it was where Harry Potter was, and they paved. Oh, over that's the whole right. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I forgot. Because yeah, no, oh, Tom, mentioned... I gotta get you, man. You gotta, we gotta. I gotta I've never been out. to any cool you can things fly down. Anything, Vegas you is get, the only thing you need I've to ever get some been sun, to. Tom. You need to get some sun yeah. on that. Dome. I do. You have no idea. <laughs> you know, Florida, you know, Florida is really nice, Tom. I don't like humidity. South but Carolina is even better. We have less humidity. Like that, like you'll get hot, but we'll go get some ice cream. No, beer. you come to South Carolina where we have less humidity. We got great weather out here on the island, and you come visit Mexican Iron Man because he has plenty of room here. Yeah. Uh, I think we're caught up on the uh, super chats, if I'm not mistaken, but we do have a couple of member chats here real quick. We want to grab. Uh, let's see here. We got. You got the um, ones from early in the show start, right? There were three of them. I may have, but we're, we're going to start with Kit Kats here. Uh, uh, I was surprised at just how good George Molo's channel. Oh, of course, George isn't here at the moment. No, George true. Molo's channel is providing to be. He is eloquent, oh. a skilled writer, and yet a clear analytical mind. Andre has the same combination. Very effective. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you, Kit Kat. I love listening George to George's takes. Uh, it's almost like he's a, a really, uh, I don't know how to c explain it, but like he's got that TV commentator slash yeah. really well spoken teacher kind of thing going along you listen to him you i literally engaged. think all of you guys here uh except for me do that very well bullshit That's jay you're you're better at it than i am so whatever you can nah, you are an nah. educator aren't you <laughs> oh no well, yeah, yeah yeah that, that doesn't helps. mean i'm a good speaker <laughs> <laughs> that's kind well, of like a condition of it I was saying, nah, right. have you seen teachers recently <laughs> That's a I different have, yes, argument, very yes. but not with you. <laughs> no. And uh, Mike, I'm not seeing any more actual. Messages. Okay, I'll go ahead and do them. Dolbin, yes. who's been a member for two months, um, is uh, at the Midnighter level. We've got Billy D, who's been a member for eight months, and also Joachim Stark. In addition to the super chat, oh, okay, chat. I thought you meant messages. Yeah. In addition to a super chat, uh, Joachim Stark has been a member for eight months. Those are all member chats. Sorry, it took us so long, but no, nope, uh, sorry about that. My I fault. misinterpreted. Thank you for that, though. I, I copied one in there from Kit Kat. Yeah, I just read that one. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right. Um, and then I'll, I'll do, I will, I think George already saw it, Kit Kat, but I will make sure he sees it when he gets back. Mm. And then we did just get one now from Paulus Plain. Did you want to read that one, Andre, if you're still here? Uh, certainly. Paulus Plain says for 100 Norwegian krona, Midnight's Edge, please invite Clownfish TV to talk about the daily dose of dismal Disney uh, and other comic book things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we reached out to them before, but it's like the matter of scheduling and stuff like that and just making everything meet out. But, uh, but hopefully one of these days we'll have them on. But yeah, they're more than welcome anytime they can um, make it work in their schedule for sure. They're awesome. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, with that, we do have a little bit more news here. Uh, yeah. We have more, like I said, I get that this, I wouldn't call this breaking news per se, but I'm glad to have you here, Jay, because uh, some Star Wars news anyway. And then we're going to get into what Mike has for us. Uh, this just came across my desk here. As we were talking about last week, uh, Rogue Squadron got pushed back, right? Delayed. Uh, I had heard some rumors, some other people have been hearing some rumors, but now there's more rumors going around that, the real reason was being delayed is creative differences. Yep. Dun, dun, dun. Come to no surprise. It's so nobody. fun when you first get one story of why it's delayed and then a completely other one. Kathy's not playing well with others again. <laughs> I think gotcha. it might be I think more it's more like it. with Patty. 
Patty. Yeah, Patty, Patty, Patty. Yeah. Was gonna this say, has nothing was, to do with Kathy, technically. No, I know. I was yeah. just being facetious. Yeah. But okay. I'm going to read this over here. here like I missed the Rogue Squadron game from back in the day. Right. Uh, so according to uh, Adam Bernard over at Comic Book. Uh, Dot com. Uh, it wasn't too long ago Star Wars work Squadron was expected to be the next Star Wars film to hit theaters. At one point, it was going to be enter pre-production by the end of the year and pick up principal photography early 2022. Now the film has been delayed indefinitely and will no longer meet its current release date of December 22nd, 2023. Nor now, the other. This, um, now, what movie was it that just moved into that place this, the other day? Somebody remind me because as soon as that happened, I'm like, that movie is not coming out that day. Oh, um, isn't it this the supposed Star Trek uh, four? Yes, yes. As soon as as soon as Paramount announced that, even though I don't think that movie's coming, that just told me that that they they changed something. Anyway, the Lucas the Lucas film has yet to officially comment on the matter. One Hollywood insider suggests creative differences between the studio and filmmaker Patty Jenkins led to the delay, and it's unclear if the two sides will be able to work together on a later date. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't Kathy. <laughs> script it just says someone at the studio well uh, no yeah. it, it probably isn't kathy it was probably someone above kathy because again, kathy Pack, wants yeah. rogue squadron all right Kath, kathy and candy wants rogue squadron patty jenkson wants rogue squadron and the two of them might be more aligned than we care to admit but that's why well, i've heard other things from two different people um as as to why that is not the case so and it has nothing to do with the uh an issue between kathy or patty I'll put it that way. All right. Well, moving on here. Uh, the latest report comes from THR editor Matthew Belloni, who says Jenkins was frustrated by the micromanagement of select Lucasfilm executives. You want to say that again? <laughs> anyway, eventually yep. opting to pursue. It has nothing to do with that. There's other executives there. <laughs> Remember, Captain president, well, not an executive. Lucasfilm worked on fixing internal problems, working... <laughs> That's not usual, of course, but it's a laughably reoccurring problem at Lucasfilm under President Kathleen Kennedy, says agents, top filmmaker, are dying to make a Star Wars movie until they sign on and experience the micromanagement and plot point by committee process, Baloney writes in the latest issue of his newsletter. He adds, it happened to the Game of Thrones guys, David Benioff and Dan Weiss, who were hired to create a new trilogy, but bailed. It also happened to Ryan Johnson, writer and director of 2017's Last Jedi, who also, whose own, I don't know about this, whose own planned trilogy was shelved. I think that was shelved for other reasons. Uh, Jenkins wasn't willing to dick around, and she was. She has other projects, notably Wonder Woman 3 at Warner Brothers, where she enjoys more creative freedom. Uh, and then it just goes into uh, when Rogue Ro Squadron, Squadron was first announced, Disney went out of its way to film a teaser featuring Jenkins, who would have been the first woman to direct a Star Wars film at the time and was even being heralded as the greatest fighter pilot movie ever made. Jenkins made public comments on the project, suggested the film script was nearing completion. It's going amazing, Jenkins told Hollywood Reporter. I had only been on the... Uh, this is all old stuff anyway. Okay, so that's the basics of it. That's kind of what we were hearing, right, Andre? Yeah, there pretty some, much. There was some creative differences. <clears throat> it was... Uh... It wasn't scheduling. It was creative, uh, evidently. Uh, so, yeah, but before we start giving uh, our take, let's hear what our esteemed guests have to say. Uh, Drunk 3 po let's begin with you. Uh, what's your instant response to this? Uh, not surprising. Lucasfilm just doesn't seem to be organized properly. I mean, it seems like every year we get announcements that this guy's doing a movie, this guy's doing this, this and then it just kind of dis quietly disappears. It just seems like they're just not. It seems like they do it on purpose to me. It sounds like shock testing, like, you know, we'll throw it out there and see what sticks and see how people react to it. And, if, you know, statistically, uh, if you get hired to uh, to direct uh, a Star Wars movie from a uh, modern day Lucasfilm, your odds of actually making one are extremely slim. <laughs> Slimmer than outside of the other studio systems. I mean, it's it's par for the course for a movie to be announced and then dropped. It, it it's pretty much is. It's very difficult to get a movie made. 
But with Lucasfilm, it's it's exceedingly large, uh, harder. Yeah, uh, script. Uh, the, uh, have you counted, or does anybody know out there how many directors uh, Kathy has gotten rid of in her I, tenure? I think More than have actually made the movie. I think they're closing oh. in on ten directors, or at least ten filmmakers that have wow. at least been announced. Close to ten, not not exactly ten, but close. Very how close. many have disappeared? None. Like from existence, or seven, seven or eight? Because <laughs> right now we have Patty Jenkins as the newest one. So, you guys seeing the uh, the report now that her contract was just extended three years? I've been seeing that around, and it just this is breaking right now everywhere. This well, has been going around exactly. in a couple places. It's been I, going around a couple places since Friday. We just. Yeah. yeah. The very reason I'm not so right sure there. about it is because it's three years. Yeah, that's very against Bo against what Bob Chapek is for. So um, if uh, if she has been extended for three years, which I question, but if that is true, there's going to be some heavy provisios in that contract. Yeah. Uh, but real everyone recall, uh, we actually for for those that still now like to claim, you said she would be fired. No, actually, we have been saying that she wouldn't be fired the past three years. And we were the first to break the rumors. Well, to be fair, we, uh, we, they came from Mikey Sutton, but we were the first yeah. to bring to YouTube that uh, she actually might be extended. They're talking about that. Yeah, I uh, always believe but, uh, that but she's people, not going to Indiana. Oh, forgive me. Yeah, but, but, but we, we will get to help ourselves. We can, we can, uh, we can get into that a little bit later on because I also want to hear what uh, what others have to say about. Uh, this whole thing, Rogue Squadron, uh, the, the thing. What's going on with that? What can be the real issue behind the creative, uh, creative disagreements? George, for instance, your thoughts on that? I think he stepped away. I think he's still okay. Yeah. Well, so um, Mikey, carry on then. I'm right oh, here. No, he's back. Here he is. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take an emergency call. What was no, the absolutely. Again? And now because we were talking about Patty Jenkins, and now we were like learning that there's actually creative differences, that uh, whole umbrella, which is the real reason why Rogue Squadron is uh, delayed indefinitely. And I think we can say forever. But what <laughs> do you make of it? I think it's the same thing that's happening with, if you remember a few days ago, there was a mention of uh, Chloe Zhao taking on a Star Wars film. And then after Eternals, uh, they announced, nope, she's not going to be I think that was a uh, publicity think? stunt or stunt casting by someone's wishful thinking. Because I, I made the because somebody pointed out and made the joke, oh, so she's not, she lost the job that she was never officially announced for in the first fucking place. Uh, I think it was somebody just either putting it out there to kind of push Eternals box office and or wishful thinking. I well, that's never happened before, Tom. Come on. <laughs> exactly. No, like that's, yeah. I, 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 just think, I think they're reevaluating where they are. At least that's my perception from the outside based on what's happening, especially after the trailers had dropped, not the trailers, but when they had the Disney Plus day, when they were showing uh, Boba Fett and they were showing the Obi-Wan behind the scenes, I don't think there was as much uh, positive reaction as they were expecting. Well, on that note, uh, Tanil brings up in a five dollar super chat. Ah, D plus day. The investor call that launched a thousand long faces and named yeah. after the grade it received upon turning its homework into the teacher. Oh, that's true. Very well done, Tanil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is. I think we're even. I mean, look at the uh, earlier. We just saw we saw Jesse show the stock price. How did yeah, it just it impact? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's just crashing. They hit the, it's down. the Titanic. Yeah, it's down almost a full percent again today. So wow. I, it, it's possible it could finish. It, it might finish the day just above 158. Um, Where do you think it will settle out, though? Uh, I don't know, because now everybody's charting it as bullish. Um, it doesn't have a good outlook in the in the near future, mid range or long term. Um, it, 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 Disney Plus Day was bad news for, you know, plus on top of a couple of two, you know, films that you know back to back weren't you know received well um you have you know which the weird situation where the critics and the fans are kind of you know <laughs> aligned on some stuff um for the first time in a long time there's some there's some weird stuff going on with disney right now and yeah i don't i don't know i mean they they've been overvalued for a long time i mean but we'll have to see what the future looks like and this is perfect timing uh, yes but, so mikey are you gonna have a question george 
Well, I was going to say, I think a lot of that value that they had, which I agree with culture, was based on the a lot on the first phase, the first, second, and third phase of Marvel and how they were blowing through everything. Exactly. It's content-based. But right now, I mean, think of it. You had Shang-Chi, you had Black Widow, Shang-Chi, you have Eternals. Plus, how did the uh, series, how did the D-plus series fare over the summer? You know, between Loki and... Um, the Scarlet I'm sorry, Ray. guys, but I thought we were talking about Star Wars and you know, Ooh, we are, Rogue Squadron. Talking, we like, we are, but I'm talking about the. But when you, whenever you have a company, you have to look mm-hmm. at it as a whole. True, but we haven't gotten to that part yet, right? We still haven't heard from Mike. We still haven't heard from Jay or Culture or Jesse. Right. Well, I was just addressing the the That's whole fair. thing with Andre. Yeah, with I'm, Andre. Okay. Okay, uh, so, someone decide what we do next. <laughs> well, let's get everybody's take real quick on Rose Quadra, and then we'll jump into this thing that Mikey's had up here for about 30 minutes now or more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can take it down. No, I mean, uh, I think this, this is a company who, whether Kaken gets extended or not, it goes back to what Jay said when we started this t- the first round, Robin. I think we have a company that doesn't know what it's doing with what it's got and doesn't know where it's going. And, and in particular, they don't know what we want because they don't care about us and they don't engage with us. That's my point. Mine is short and sweet. To me, this sounds like kind of the type of thing where it's you get a band going and they have a good first album, then the record company takes creative control away, and then they suck, and then no one makes any money. That's Are you talking about like when Disney bought Star Wars to begin with, or just recently? Yeah, that's what they do with everything. It's like a revolving door, just bastardizing things and thinking you know what's right mm-hmm. and you have no idea because you're not a creative person you're a something else person you should just do your job and let them do their job because artists create things and most people don't so you're saying so, like they just buy the ip without a plan is that what you're saying say again you're saying they buy the ip without a plan well, that's the thing. They're corporate people. Corporate people always think they have a plan, and they always pat each other on the back about said plans. And if it doesn't work out the first time, add more bureaucracy to said plan. Yeah, Something funny just happened on my. Uh, I got to show this because oh, I can't. It's gone already. I brought up Yahoo Finance to look at market capitalization, mm-hmm. and Jay, the first ad that came up was Nine Line Apparel, and it was your shirts, the Rebellion oh, shirts, hey. were were wow. front and center on my Yahoo Finance. I'm like, I know they're gone now. Doug got it. It was so That's cool. Beautiful. That's beautiful. It was like, it re- and there's no reason because the browser I'm using for for this stuff for YouTube is never the browser of the computer that I used to buy the stuff that I ordered from Nine Line before. Google knows you're talking out. to Jay. <laughs> cool. That's good for Jay. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, let's look at some. Uh, do you want to go so, back? So, to- who else had to go yet? Uh, we haven't heard from Jay yet. So, what uh, I was the first Jay? one to go. I was going to say I thought he was. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. sorry, I must have missed that. All right. So, then I think we're covered. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what is this thing all about here, Mike? Because I couldn't read the whole story because it was behind a paywall. Okay. So uh, do you, it says Netflix ploys to join Disney in the $300 billion market cap club. So market cap and, you know, George, anybody jump in if you want to join me with this or anyone. But uh, you know, it's, it's quite shocking. I didn't know this was possible for somebody like Netflix. Well, I think that speaks to the heat. The heat is on. So when we deal with market cap, which basically the price of the stock times the outstanding shares that people can buy out on the publicly traded market. And a company like Netflix, once upon a time, had little boxes on the side of 7-Elevens and little places that you would you know, mail in and get DVDs from. And then they emerged and, and, and into a different company. Now, Disney is widely regarded as being one of the main fortune uh, you know, one of the one of the major Fortune 100 companies, right? I mean, Disney is up there with uh, companies like you know, AT and T, Comcast. I mean, we're talking about legacy companies. So let me just read this. Just when investors were starting to lose faith in Netflix's growth story, the streaming giant came roaring back, proving content is still king. In the past few weeks, all anyone could seem to talk about is Netflix. Netflix's latest blockbuster hit, Squid Game. The show has been a major win for the company from both the consumer and investor standpoint. The kind of hit investors are hoping can drive subscriber growth in many key regions, including Asia Pacific and even the U.S. and Canada. And there's a chart. Uh, 
chart about the top 10 most Netflix uh, shows. Since the show's launch on September 17th, it has remained the top show on the platform. And last week, Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarando said Squid Game had a very good chance of becoming the company's biggest show ever. Shonda Rhimes now Riggerton currently holds a top spot, followed by the French series Lupin. The excitement around Netflix's fresh content pushed the stock up to an all-time highs of $640.39 on Tuesday. Hint, hint, what's Disney's stock per share value right now? The company's market cap was seen at a cool $283 billion as of market close Wednesday, an inch closer to the $300 billion market cap milestone. The only other major media giant to gain access to that exclusive club has been Disney, which joined on December 11, 2020, following its investor presentation the day before. On December 7th, VIP Plus published a prediction that Disney would be the first big media company to cross the $300 billion market cap milestone. At the time, Disney was riding on a Disney Plus a strong momentum, and now it appears Netflix has found a similar boost. Even though Disney still has the highest market cap among its peers, its valuation has basically stayed flat since it first crossed the $300 billion mark on December 11th. On the flip side, Netflix's market cap surged 27%, in Comcast, gained 12% since then. Meanwhile, AT&T's market value sank 12%, dropped below $200 billion. Verizon was not included in the group this time around as the sale of the media assets was finalized in September. Many were expecting 2021 to be the rapid year of recovery. While things were moving in the direction of the first half of the year, progress came to a screeching halt. I'm going to skip down and say that's when Netflix struck. It announced an expansion into video games, launched an e-commerce site, selling merchandise, and held its first ever fan event, Tudum to show off its upcoming content slate. Netflix is f in full offensive mode, and its new strategic endeavors are giving fresh hope to investors. Its comeback arrives as Disney Plus's rapid rise loses some momentum. Disney CEO Bob Ch 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 Chapek warned of a slowdown in subscriber growth for Disney Plus at the Goldman Sachs Communico Communicopia Conference in late September. Chapek said investors should expect global paid subscriber growth in the low single-digit millions. For the quarter and didn't he just say in the recent one too that their subscriber growth was down? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Tom. Good call. The warning said Disney shares plunging more than four percent. Investors had been banking on Disney Plus to provide much needed support for the media giant during a time in which its core businesses were suffering through the ongoing pandemic. Disney Plus's growth had been extremely strong and looked like Netflix Netflix's strongest competitor in the streaming wars. However, the expectations headed into Q3 earnings shifted dramatically over the past couple weeks after Netflix's top position in the streaming wars was threatened following the company's weaker than expected first half. The mature streaming company could surprise investors this time around. Even so, Netflix still has a lot to prove when it reports its third quarter financial results. All right. So anyway, the basically the deal here is that, um, you know, Netflix is coming on. If you look at share price times. Oh, a number of outstanding shares. You know, where do you want to put your money? Uh, I mean, I think this is fascinating. What do you think? What do you, some of you guys think? George, you're at the top of the, the, the list here. Well, I think after last year, after they had that cuties problem where they lost uh, uh, a few hundred thousand subscribers, I think this is good for Netflix. I think they're coming back strong. I still think, especially with the Chappelle special that they had and the controversy that it uh, built, the fact that they still stood behind them, even though, they kept apologizing to everyone. I think it's a uh, it's boosting, it's helping them along. And then you had again Squid Game, and they're bringing on more shows. We're going to see how Cowboy Bebop's going to do, and and then we have um, I forgot what other series was coming. Cobra but Kai I, starts in December. Yeah, Cobra yeah. Kai. So I think they're coming into a good season for them. And then it's just good timing with Disney and what's happening with them. Don't they also have Stranger Things soon too? I was just going to say I think there's another season of Stranger Things coming yet too. I just don't know when it is. I know there's a trailer. I haven't seen it yet. Chef didn't seem very impressed because she was watching while we were gaming. So, Script Doctor, what do you think about this news about valuation in the company in terms of content and so forth? Well, I think it's uh, pretty good to see that uh, the dominating factor for the streaming wars is uh, getting a bit more clear now. We're, we're able to see which players are, are showing, their, showing their muscle and strengthening uh, what they want to do. And uh, as George uh, said recently, just with the with regards to like the Chappelle uh, special and um, Squid Game, Netflix is kind of um, realizing that they don't need to kowtow to some of the uh, the naysayers out there. They can they can do the content that they want, and they're actually still going to succeed uh, with that. And I think that's a good sign. Drunk? 
I totally agree. I I canceled Netflix after Cuties. I never got it back. <laughs> so that's, that's I canceled. I, I haven't seen Squid Games. I haven't seen show. a lot of these things because I just uh, stand on you know my personal principles, not judging anybody else who has it. So drunk, you haven't seen Cobra Kai? Uh, I saw the last season at my brother's house because he was like, "You have to watch it" because he wanted to talk to me about it so bad. So. <laughs> See everybody, yeah. everybody saying, "Oh, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai," and then I got the DVD for the first two seasons. It's like, shit, I gotta get Netflix now. <laughs> so, culture, yeah, what do you I, think? About- I'm still not gonna get it. So, culture, what do you think about this valuation news for Netflix? Uh, to me, it seems like the the natural order has been restored. <laughs> but again, I mean, Netflix is a, unlike Disney. Netflix isn't a multifaceted business yet. I mean, they they did they did announce as you 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 said you know gaming diving into gaming and some other stuff. But I don't like I said what I see from them in the future um, is maybe they reach out beyond those 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 those. those bounds as well unlike disney but to me i think and and this is a conversation i had the other day and i don't know if you'll agree with me uh mike but but maybe maybe some other people might i think the i think the streaming growth has matured i think we're i think we're we've we've saturated the market with enough different streaming services that the subscribers are now essentially going to just be where they are at I mean, I know the global game is still not done yet, but for the most part, for Netflix, Disney, and a lot of these others that have expanded into these other territories, those incremental gains aren't going to be significant. It's now going to be the competition that will decide who the big winners are in the streaming wars. I think we've moved on from who's going to be the the most subscribed to to who's going to ultimately be the ones that stick around. If you right. understand what I'm saying. Yeah, because you had a lot of, I mean, how many people started their streaming services last? Well, didn't you have in the last three years, you had Paramount, they started theirs, and now they're part of the, is it Discovery Culture? Yeah, well, I mean, you have the, War, the, the Warner Media Discovery that are that 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 merger when that finishes up and that's a reverse Moore's trust mm-hmm. um uh so that because of taxes and stuff like that actually hollywood reported a great article on that today but um the if if you look at why they're doing it that way it's to keep the value in that company going forward not create this weird tax circumstance or create a debt issue is on top there's a lot of weird, weird reasons why they did that but what 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 i think i, I think what i think is going to happen mm-hmm. is you're going to end up with four streaming service main right. streaming services and then I think a bunch of also rants that are bundled together. Right. Well, it kind of reminds me of like the 1999, the, when the dot-com bubble burst. You know, you had everybody was creating a dot-com. And then that started to weed out all the chaff. And these streaming wars, I think I've done the same thing. Everybody was starting a streaming service. And all of a sudden, we're going to have, just like Culture said, who's going to be left? You might have four or five left at the end of the day. Well, and you, you have to also remember, Disney's had a lot of failure in the tech side of things. I mean, they they brought a lot of tech out that didn't pan out, and you you just mentioned the dot com thing. Yeah, they remember they bought go dot com, right? Mm-hmm. That right now that's really only used for their own tools at this point. Oh, that I didn't know. Yeah, it didn't pan out. Wow. No, Jesse, I want to get your take because um, I, I got a few things to say about this, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to end up, unless they come out with something new, I'm going to cancel my Netflix after Stranger Things. <laughs> well, I'm going to get it next year again when Cobra Kai comes back. I mean, there's going to be a giant wall in there. Well, and that's actually the other problem, right? I mean, to be honest with you, it's one of the reasons why Disney Plus is kind of falling flat and why they're not gaining more North American subscribers. I mean, let's just be honest. Um, right. Well, they need better content. Yeah, you yeah, watch the Marvel movie so many times. Right. It always comes down to content with whatever. If it's in the publishing industry or in the streaming industry. Well, that kind of goes where I was going to go with this. Because, like, here's yeah. the thing. And, I mean, anybody who's been watching the channel for any number of years, streaming wars is a word that we've been saying for a while. Uh, I can't say we coined the term, but I'm pretty sure we were one of the first ones to talk about it because we knew this was looming before some of these channels were even named or coined or even announced in some cases. But as I've pointed out time and time again, the reason a lot of these companies wanted to get in on this is because they saw Netflix as a very big profitable company. They're like, look at all this money we're making off of Netflix. Not thinking that the reason they were making that money was because Netflix was paying them and it was all this you know, back and forth. And then when they got into this game, especially Disney and Warner learned off the bat that it was not 
what they thought it was going to be. Plus, they rushed into this whole thing. Right. So you had two companies that rushed into it. You had Netflix and Amazon who are already really, really well established, right? And then you had all these other companies that sprouted up around them. Hulu is the only one that's kind of been around, but that's an American-based company. So that one's never really talked about as much. But Amazon is always overlooked. But Amazon is kind of like what we call the mainstay, right? It, between Netflix and Amazon are like the two mainstays. And we read an article about this a while back. And it, who do you think... Who do you think will, will come out ahead? Do you think Amazon will? Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm just no, no, no. You're right. Amazon, Amazon is kind of like like they're just there because they they got the whole thing is Amazon Prime comes with the free shipping and stuff. Right. And I, we talked about it before. Like I think there's some thirty percent or something of the the people that have Amazon Prime don't even realize or they don't use yeah. the video <laughs> part. Um, but it is there and they have it. Because don't you is, you have Wheel of Time coming out? They have the Lord of the Rings. I mean, I don't know how that how that's gonna go. But they're bringing on some uh, big IP. And Amazon really pushes a lot more of the movies and stuff, too. And honestly, they're the ones that I rent from because it's like, right. if I can't, I'll go through the normal search and it will tell me, like, like uh, if I look for GoldenEye, mm -hmm. it will tell me all the different options I have to right. watch GoldenEye and different qualities and then what price or free or whatever. If there is no free, Amazon is hooked up to all my shit anyway, so I just click on there, search it, and they got everything, you know? Well, Amazon's smart in that respect, and they actually handle a lot of the the digital hubbing for a lot of these video services anyway. So, like, that'll be the difference is, is like, Amazon will be kind of like a local hub for a lot of these things, mm -hmm. and that's why they'll stick around. Netflix will po possibly stick around, but what, what I was going to get to is we had, we had talked about this time and time again, and they actually did an article about it that we covered, and uh, we've talked about it a few times where basically what people will do is hop around. They'll pick one, one mainstay, which whether it's Amazon or Netflix, and then they'll hop around to all the other services. One month they'll have HBO max one month. They'll have Disney mm -hmm. plus one month. They'll have Peacock and so on down the line. It's like following the circus of towns on which, uh, where, where the shows are at this hey, month. Tom, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, just out of curiosity, what, um, do you think that with all these different streaming services, we're going to eventually start to see like more types of mergers where it'll just be like, uh, you know, instead of like getting seven different streaming services, like three will come together and it'll yes. just be like, like Apple TV and Peacock and all these others that will. Yes. We'll see um, more we're already compared. seeing it because of discovery and Warner. Blending. And everybody will compare the price of everything to their old cable. I think and like we didn't improve anything. I think <laughs> at some point Amazon will probably take up Paramount Pluses. Oh, really? Um, oh, I think so. Yeah, I think mm. Apple will probably buy up uh, somebody. We'll get involved oh. with Sony and Sony. somebody else. Yeah. Even though Sony's real chummy right now with Netflix, yep. Apple is like chomping at the bit to buy a movie studio right now. Yep. Um, MGM, we know, is going to Amazon. Uh, yeah, Amazon, I think, rules the day on everything because at the end of the day, uh, they're doing Blue Horizon, right? So they're going to have... They're the sleeping giant everybody keeps forgetting about because they didn't even really mention them in this article, right? Yeah they're, making, no. yeah, they're making their own space company. I mean, you think they can't get their own satellites and their own space right. system? No, but I think you're, you're dead on, Jay. Eventually what's going to happen is a lot of these smaller ones are not going to be able to compete. Up. Yeah. Um. When when the dust settles, you're gonna have Disney Plus, you're gonna have Netflix, you're gonna have HBO Max, and you're gonna probably have Peacock just because Peacock can stay standing because of Comcast, and they got you know they got because a little the, bit more Comcast them. has the actual infrastructure. Same yeah. Thing as AT &T. And then what will happen is Amazon and Apple TV and all these other ones will probably soak up what's left over. So, I'm so who, who gets who? Mommy too, or but... Daddy? <laughs> That's a good question. It'll all depend on how they can do it legally, uh, because then you're going to run into the <laughs> the monopoly issues probably. Right. But it seems like the a la carte is going to go away because it's well, going to basically like, you know, all these streaming services came out and then everyone's like, look at all the options that I have. And now it's going to go back into three or four left. Well, that's, I think that is probably true. I mean, it's going to be like pay television was. You know, you have Showtime, HBO, right. Cinemax, and all that. That's yeah. kind of what it's going to end up being. And and people are – it's going to be a luxury. And, you know, until they try to put a contract, which, uh, believe me, I don't think it works in their favor if they just try to obligate people to contracts, um, you know, you're going to have exactly what Tom described. You're going to have people hopping around to whatever is – has. Well, and then got. the other thing that's going to get come into play is something that Script and I have brought up a few times, and that is – 
the ad revenue. Sooner yeah. or later, they're going to have right. to open these up to more ad based systems, Disney. and some of them already have. So it's not some like of them started with that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So well, it's talk and 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 Warner's now deep dipping, di- 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 uh, diving deeply into that, uh, with the Discovery merger. So you're going to see three tiers with Discovery, you'll see three tier, you'll see the three tiers over, you know, with Peacock, you'll see three tiers in the future, I believe, for Disney. Uh, I think the only one that won't be that way will be Amazon because again, it's to, it's like the throw in with Amazon and they're not even paying attention to them as a streaming service, which is weird. And yeah, there's always the possibility that there might be an aggregate streaming, uh, an, or sorry, not aggregate, an affiliate streaming service yeah. where that streaming service purchases shows from various other streaming networks mm-hmm. to air exclusively. So that's just a one package deal. Um, yeah, so that you don't have to subscribe that. to four different streaming services. You subscribe to one, but you're only getting the shows that you want to watch. And that's then kind of what yeah, I like a secondary is company point, that's like exactly a centralized either. hub. Mm-hmm. Wait, yeah, what Amazon, did you both say? I yeah, two of you were talking at the same has, time. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Wait. Somebody. Go ahead. Tom. <laughs> oh, Jesse said something, so I didn't hear that. Uh, it, Go ahead, Jesse. It sounds like he's uh, talking about like a secondary company that just creates a centralized hub for everything. Like you have all your bills grouped up yeah. yeah and that's kind of what i was saying is amazon's kind of already ahead of the game by doing that yeah they that's where they want to go i mean look yeah, grocery, grocery, grocery space, space movies thing, yeah would they involve something like that where they just consolidate your different bills or would they just buy each other out well that's how the mm-hmm. service system has been going especially like once once we had the telephone and then the telephone companies got into cable and then into internet the advertising angle was it's all in one bill and i think that's what customers would prefer you only have to manage one bill so if you think if they can find a way to do that with the streaming services, they will. Yeah, right. You know what? You guys just made me realize. I think I'm subscribed to some Fye thing that I'm paying for. I, well, that's just it. That's how Amazon it. gets me. Is I got like stars and a couple other things through there, and I just don't pay attention because it comes with my am you know my Amazon stuff. Uh, so yeah, you're right. That that's kind of where it's going to end up going. Is whatever's left over after the dust settles is going to probably get picked up piece by piece between Amazon and Apple because Apple's the one you got to remember is. They they can do anything at any moment. Like they can make a change at any time because they've got the money mm-hmm. and and swing this whole thing one way or another. It could go crazy, but it all depends on what they're allowed to do legally. So like again, we got to remember: anytime one of these companies wants to buy another one of these out, you got to go through all the the nonsense like Discovery is going through right now with you know Warner. I think they're still waiting to see if that's all going to go through. Amazon still got to wait for their AOK to buy MGM, even though I think the Discovery ones. They got Lasloff. He did move in last week, uh, even though it hasn't gone through yet. He's he's getting ready. So things are things are moving and shaking over there. I know that. But uh, that's kind of what we're seeing is already some of these kind of conglomerations of the two and three people together. And it's going to happen. Uh, yeah. Paulus Plain says, uh, dudes, quarter one, how long will the war of the SJWs and Wokies last? Quarter two. When will we get back our rule of a good story law? Quarter three, are we winning the war? <laughs> I think he means question three. Yeah, those are questions. Okay. Yeah. Oh, question three. Uh, okay. Yeah, because typically there are four quarters. I thought it was like, yeah, I was like, wait, yeah. for quarter four is we won. <laughs> no, uh, question one. one. How long will the war of SJWs and Wolkies last? Well, that's a question I don't think anybody has a definitive answer for, but we can hope no longer than it has to. Uh, does anybody got a quick take uh, on that? I don't think it'll last long. I was just talking about that in uh, in something that I was just I just did last week, but I, I think it's going to be shorter than most people think. I, I wouldn't give it another. I'd say two to three years at most. That's just my gut that. feeling. That's yeah, my exactly. gut feeling. Especially think about it. Let's if we take it from a from a media perspective. Every time they go woke, or I looked at Eternals as kind of like where Marvel planted its flag. They had a rich story that they could have broken it out into three or four films, in my opinion. And instead, they put it all together and they had their message was, you know, diversity, diversity, inclusivity. I mean, you had some of the actors literally talking about this movie is going to save the world. And I think that they did more damage to the film because the film itself wasn't that woke. I mean, it didn't hit you over the head with a hammer every five minutes. But I think when they keep including those types of messages and if that's the decision that they've made is this, this is their herald, this is their trumpeting call like here's where we go i think it'll it'll hurt them in the long run quicker than if they had just kept it subtle well i know like here's the thing we keep pointing out to people is like anything we see in hollywood you're it takes two three years to get done Mm -hmm. if not more than that in some cases 
So a lot of, and we got also got to remember a lot of the stuff we're seeing now is already three, four years old as it is right. because of things being shut down. Um, so again, it takes a while for that kind of stuff to change, but I do think we're seeing, I agree with you to a point to where we're seeing a change in, you know, it kind of kicked off more so with really big time with, uh, with, you know, the, the whole Chappelle thing earlier this year. And then now we're seeing the whole thing with this, this court case playing out the way it is and right. just certain other things with the, you know, the other things we can't talk about with the jabby yeah. jabs and stuff right. like that. Yeah, things are kind of uh, swinging a bit. We're getting sick of communism. Right. Yeah. But well, not just it. that, but they're getting sick of the woke SJW bullshit. And I'm having normal people ask the me same what group, woke man. is and all that right. kind of stuff. So. But the thing is, is, I mean, just look at the Virginia elections. You had, uh, the last I read, 15% of the people who were responding had voted for Biden. And they were like, there's no way. You're talking blue Democrats, hardcore. And they voted Republican just because they said, we like the, we're like we sick of this. Yeah, we're just tired of the woke, 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 woke. All that woke, just goes woke. with what I always say is that, well, like, the media likes to per, to like put out there that the world is like, you know, blue and red. When really, most of the country is a, a varying grays of purple, as I point out. Yeah, and again, yeah, exactly. Whatever happened to being normal in the middle of the road? That's right. kind of what most people are, and I think there's a lot of people waking up to this idea that these things are being taken over finally not just us can i just say that it's funny i think funny. it's funny when people refer to the overton window shifting because it, yes. it hasn't shifted it's been broken with a baseball bat we need a new one right. and then uh, we've replaced it where the old window used to go i go. just love jesse talking about middle of the road because to me i never think of jesse as the middle of the road he's <laughs> awesome <laughs> well, I just think the fact is, is that the country has generally stayed the same. It's the portrayal from the media. I mean, you have these people well, with a large yes. megaphone it's who turned, find, said, this is the way we are. This is who we are. And this is where we're going. And the country's like, you know, we're never going to get there. It's just now they're responding to it. And I think to go on a point that Tom was making, uh, how they shoot these films and they come out two or three, two or three years later, I'm really wondering if their next slate of movies are going to be more like Eternals or even be more woke, well, and if that Andre, happens, there'll be a backlash. Andre has warned that we're going to we're going to see a swing, and I've brought it up too. I don't know if Script has anything to say about this since he's a little bit more foot on the ground and the inside. But I mean, have you seen any changes yet on your end? A little bit subtle, but the thing is, like as I spoke with you and Andre some time ago, I I, sus I predicted that I think by 2024 is when we're really going to start to see a significant difference, right. um, and it's going to take a while because again Hollywood moves slow, um, mm -hmm. average between two and three years just for a single production based on that production itself, and then you also have the fact that there's been years of these people who have entered the industry and they're going to hold on to the positions that they have come hell or high water and they're right. not gonna let this uh go without a fight so i mean the, I, the war is gonna last for a few more years but it's gonna get louder but that's only just because they're, they're losing so you know, and well, I think we'll that some, answers the next peaks. two questions right there. <laughs> I, I, I have to. I have to slide out. Unfortunately, I'm no sorry. problem, culture. That's all right. I just, I just wanted you guys to uh, two thoughts that I didn't get to express before. Number one, um, there is no way there's a three year contract. Be, if there is, that go that flies in the face of what Chappick said directly about short term contracts for all the executive level positions that you know in the studio system. So he really wanted to get to one year terms and negotiate every year. I don't. So I, if that's the case, it's it it just it's a it's a complete change in his philosophy. And the second thing is, um, uh, I as far as this is concerned, um, it I, I nothing will change for four or five years because of the way the production system works. And maybe that's that that's maybe that's why Disney pushed back eat some more stuff is is as the dominoes fall and they keep having to make changes or reshoots or whatever, it pushes them all these films back another another spot pretty soon i mean you you might get you might get to a point where they realize that these are these are making less money than they need to and they may decide to go back to actually doing storytelling but who knows so are we winning not yet could we win maybe a lot mm -hmm. of it's going to have to do with everybody just shutting down the money and you know what uh, the good Tom King actually mentioned that in the chat. Anyway, I got to dip out. Thank you for having me today, guys. I really had a good time. No Jay, problem. it's great to see you, buddy. I can't wait to see you in Florida soon. Much uh, love, the, brother. Can't yeah. wait to see you either. The, the, the rest the rest of you guys, man, just just take care. Keep fighting. Keep educating. I appreciate you all. Peace. Have a good night. Hey, yeah, culture. All right. So I think, uh, that's, uh, I think that's a pretty good answer for Paulus's uh, question there, unless anybody else has anything else to add to it. 
I, I the only thing I would add is I think we're winning. That's only where Culture and I uh, disagree. I think it because of their reaction uh, in any one move and for any one thing. Again, going back to Chappelle, even the fact that Netflix had the spine initially to suspend employees who had burst into the office. I know they lost that spine. They came back and rehired them, but they still are sticking behind Chappelle. His tour and the way he's been embraced, the media keeps portraying it as anybody who's watching him is of racist or foe, or whether you have critics who, for the first time, look, they're trashing a Marvel movie. Not all of them, but they are. Yeah. All of these things look to me like we're winning, and you always have to have that perspective. I mean, we can say gloom and doom all day long, but when you look at things, when you take a, a step back, winners do not throw fits. If they were winning, they'd be they just keep doing what they're doing and be like, oh, this is great. They wouldn't keep countering the message. Right. And I hope Ghostbusters is another kick to them. Yeah. To that whole idea. And and we've seen that already in the reaction to some of the reviews. In fact, we're dropping a video here in about an hour that's gonna get on this subject specifically about how Good. a lot of these reviewers are going after this movie and and basically judging on the fact that it's not a sequel to the 2016 movie, and that's it. Right, like that's the, the their main gripe with this movie, and that's that's why a gripe. Oh yeah, basically, there's a lot of uh, critics who are review bombing. You got to remember, what, what was this? Uh, was this thing written in a crayon? Or you got to remember, Jesse. Most of these critics gave the 2016 film glowing fucking reviews. The only Yo, have you seen any scenes from that movie? Of, well, of course, I have, Jesse. Half the reason I'm it, here is because it, of that movie. It, <laughs> It's not even that it's not funny. It's it's just annoying. Like it's, well, it's like being tortured to watch it. It feels like the Ludovico technique. I remember when that movie came out, the only respectable critic that I know of that gave that movie an actual review was Richard Roper. Mm, wow. He ripped that fucking movie apart. Good. And I applauded his ass for that. I tell you what. Because every other critic was eating that movie's ass, and it was just like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Because I even tried to be fair about it, and oh my god! Well, here's one thing I can say: No, Dude, Andre you could give that you could give that movie like a hell of a handicap, and it will still come out. With no, yeah, movie. exactly. And and actually, this just this brings bringing this up actually reminds me because Andre and I just talked about this. We're planning on doing a, a roundtable on the first two Ghostbuster films, the original two. That sounds like uh, to kind of bring everything full circle for Midnight's mm -hmm. Edge because the new film coming out. And then Thursday night, we're going to do a round table. I know Mike's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Uh, script, unfortunately, I know you can't see it. I think Jesse's going to be able to make it. Uh, we'll see who else can come in. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about that Thursday night here on this channel. So yeah, it'll be in place I, I won't the be meeting. able to see it until Friday. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it till Friday. Well, at least it'll be me, Mike, and <laughs> whoever else I can muster up then to see it. So Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, 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 out. I'm literally out going Thursday, actually. I'm, I'm going to one o'clock. I'm literally taking a date, but I'm gonna make sure I drop Ross and come back and set up the live stream with you. <laughs> yeah, I'll never get out of work. That's commitment, sir. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Andre and I just talked about it this morning. I've been I've been wanting to do this. I think he he was totally on board with it. So we're gonna do a round table talking about the first two original Ghostbuster movies to kind of bring everything, like I said, full circle for Midnight's Edge. And we got a great video coming up that I worked all fucking day on yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on it while it was even on Doomcock stream. <laughs> so I was literally spending almost all day on it yesterday. Uh, almost a 20 minute video. And I spent almost all 20 some hours on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Organic Vista says this was $98 prior to preheat of stream over 200 in use burnt out. It's dipped time to buy next gen of star Wars Sands. KK will pump nerds. <laughs> Uh, he always has these cryptic kind of. It's like beatnik poetry, isn't it? It is. It is like it's. It's like a, what's the word I'm looking for? A haiku. Hi haikus. Yeah. And then we had a super sticker from Big Daddy MRI here. Let me see if I can bring up what that was. My thing catches up. Unless uh, somebody already knows what it is, they can help me out. Oh, oh there sure. I got it. It's a thank you with a pair, and he's just giving us a like a like a bow, like a like a sensei kind of thing. Oh, Polly's in the chat too. How you doing, buddy? Uh, HVP sends in two dollars. Is streaming causing a decline in physical media? Actually, physical media had a bump this year, but it was mostly because of uh, COVID, most likely. But uh script i'm gonna ask you this first and then we'll get around the panel real quick okay. do you think streaming is uh 
causing a decline in physical media coming from somebody on the inside of the industry? Uh, I think it's going to have a temporary decline, but I think it's going to get a peak once they realize that they're not going to be able to find uh, the shows that they want on those certain platforms because it's going to be cycled through just like what Netflix did years ago and still does to this day. They they have movies that they've licensed for a short period of time that you can always watch on Netflix and then it goes away and then you don't have it anymore. And when people kind of get wise to that habit that's going to be applied to the rest of the streaming services, I think they're going to go back to physical media and there's going to be another demand for it. Mm. Jay? As far as... Do you think streaming is causing a decline in physical media? Absolutely. I don't buy anything anymore. Mm-hmm. I just sure. download it. I, I'm All a right. minimalist, so <laughs> like I don't, I don't keep stuff. Well, that's so the thing is just, there are people who are like that where it's not so much that yeah. they just don't want the clutter. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's it's big for me. Basically, down to collectors want to collect, and if you're not a like collector, Tom. you're right. It's, it's couldn't agree just more. Digital. You should see. Yeah, the because they are coming out with those beautiful, like the collectors' boxes that come out oh, for some yeah. of the movies that we love are gorgeous. Like they put a lot of work. Uh, you get posters and cards and extra footage and all this stuff like that to to buy now. It seems like that that's the way to go. Like I agree, it's for collectors. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I have no uh, reason to buy it. I just would rather just click a button and then watch. So I found it more difficult. I mean, I used to go to Best Buy every week, and now they've wiped out. They used to have rows, and it's just now one display. Oh, yeah, so you used to go there to actually find the stuff you couldn't find other places. Right, anywhere else. Now and it's like every Tuesday, place. right? <laughs> yep, every Tuesday. Actually, yeah, exactly. I, I, I still go to Best Buy. I'm sorry to jump in. I'm sorry we didn't no, no, I didn't yeah, yeah. interrupt. No, George. no, go, go. Okay, sorry, but I was just going to piggyback on you. I also go to Best Buy. I still go to Best Buy. What I've noticed, well, first of all, Tom got me on a 4K kick now. So, yeah, me too. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, I don't do weed or any of that stuff, but it, I feel like I'm going to my 4K dealer now. Like, I, go to <laughs> yeah, I know Buy. it too. I go to Best Buy once yeah. a week. And here's what I've noticed. I've noticed like the 4K section is getting bigger, but everything else is getting smaller. It is. That's the thing. It's like I talked to one of the managers there because I've been going to the same store for years. And I'm like, uh, what are y'all doing? They go, we're pushing streaming. They're going Best Buy Corporate just announced that they're doing this all across the country and all their stores. And they're like, nope, everything's going streaming. I'm like, but what about us? All the people that come every week is like uh, streaming. I bought a system. <laughs> I mean, that was it. I bought a system called Kaleidoscape uh, last year because they said they had, you know, they're going to have every movie on. It's going to be in 4K quality and the ones that aren't are like UHD. And, and still, I don't find everything that I want. So I'm still ordering the media because I like also to collect them. So I guess uh, Jesse was right. It goes back down to collecting. Even Jay was saying that. But uh, I, I enjoy the, same the thing with comic books, man. I mean, like you, you pick up a movie, you like it, then you got to get all the movies. Well, do you think it's causing a decline, though, Jesse, to answer the question? You know, yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it has to because all the all the people who want the convenience are just going to go for it. Yeah. See, oh, I, yeah. The, the has only a- reason I don't like mm-hmm. it is because once I bought a movie, um, it was either an X Men movie or heavy metal, but uh, I switched accounts and I lost it, and they couldn't like switch it over. And I'm yeah. like, well, now that's gone. So I didn't well, just really it's buy funny it. you mentioned that about convenience because just the other day, I think it was was it Saturday. I I said to myself, I'm gonna just watch a movie, a random one. I'm just gonna watch a movie, and I said, you know what? I want. I feel like seeing Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I had bought it. I mean, I knew I had it physically, but I also yep. knew I had it. I, I had it in an electronic version somewhere. And I'm like, fuck, I can't even remember where I bought that. Was it Amazon? Was it here? Was it that? I said, fuck it. So I just grabbed the DVD, went downstairs, put it in the 4K player that Tom helped me buy, and <laughs> I, I watched it. And that was faster <laughs> than if I could have tried to figure out where the hell I had originally bought it from back before I had the physical media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's no folder. It's not like you have like a... Uh... Like, you know, you have a Bitcoin wallet or something for right. your physical media. Yeah, I, I also like it because you own it. You know, it's not something someone can take away from you just to add on to what they were well, saying. Well, and that's where I was going to jump into this. Is like, yes, there's the convenience aspect. Yes, it is causing a decline. But going off of what everybody's been saying here, you have a few factors that get pointed out quite often by us. One, there's plenty of parts of America that have shit internet still. So you, your choices mm, are limited on what you point. can watch. Um, so DVDs still take up, what is it, 40% of the market script? Uh, I think, think about that, yeah. Maybe yeah, a little like that. Yeah, still enough. 
like a good 30 percent, i think is blu-ray and then the rest is taken up by 4k so like you know it's that's still physical media is selling and dvd is still king basically because there's a lot of areas that, that do that not only that there's a lot of areas where you have like their their libraries are being taken over by dvds now instead of books wow. so that's See, another, that, that's yeah. another thing like uh he was saying he likes to have it because you, you know no one could take it from him well no one could change it they change movies well that's my time. next point exactly. that's why I, that's why i like old books because unless somebody comes in and steals it and burns it it's right. still there yeah. well we've already run into a few cases of this and unlike you know where you just said you just changed your uh account jesse there's situations where they'll mm -hmm. lose the license to these movies and if you don't have it stored oh in some they just way, scoop which, it on you they it just goes bye bye um yep. and cool. and there's nothing you can do about it and a lot of these services make it very difficult to actually physically download these things in any way shape or form you can download them to like their app but even like my voodoo app it's limited very limited and and the same thing with amazon i haven't been able to figure out how to download anything outside of songs off there so again i have yet to run into a service where i can actually download any of these movies in any way without watching them with the app which I still think you got to be online to watch it. So there's the other problem. What happens if your internet goes out? Right. <laughs> like, okay, so, yeah. Go can ahead. I can okay. I interject real quick? If you buy off iTunes, you could download them onto your. Do they? Player. Yeah, but what you have to use, of, uh, like, watch it through an iTunes player, player, which is one caveat, but still. But you can do it without Wi-Fi. And, like, exactly. Because, because I do that on airplanes all the time. So. Yeah, but what, what about that? when you have like I used to buy this series called the Sharp series with uh, Bean, uh, Sean Bean in it, and I bought it off of iTunes, and then it was like a year later. Uh, it disappeared. I had to download it actually from my history. I know it's not a big deal, but what's the next step? What happens? I don't know why that happened, but then six months after that, they introduced a new Sharp series, meaning uh, uh, the same series, but with uh, new labels, new uh, new covers. But for a while, I couldn't get it. I had to go back into my history. It That's wasn't available. Thing, yeah. Right, but I was thinking, so if I didn't have it in my – Meaning one day they do it where they've removed it off the site. You can't buy it unless you've already purchased it. Well, what happens if they say, well, now you can't access it in your history. So that that's still why I go to physical media. Yeah, well, that's a possibility. Exactly. Yep. Yep. It's not um, like they're going to give you a refund. Oh, no. Yeah. Apple actually had this problem. And uh, what they did was just gave free rentals. <laughs> See, like, free the, rentals, like the yeah. movie posters behind him, right? I'm a sucker for the old movie posters and old video covers right that's completely lost in oh yeah you get but now you're shit. speaking to my like here's the thing and i wish andre was here too oh yeah because dude there's been so many awesome covers custom covers well there's good ones and then there's horrid fucking ones and we get into a lot of that stuff on some of our other physical media shows but it, it, it runs the gamut as far as like what you have you have really great stuff and then you have some that are just i hate and, and there's some notorious ones. Um, Melvin Belliard says, good afternoon, gentlemen. I think Tom had the best analogy on Friday's uh, Midnight Edge in the morning when it came to Marvel Arc with connecting it to GNR. Just find another band and connect to Star Wars. Yeah, um, Star Wars, I guess. Let's see. You have three eras, uh, one good, one not so good, and one horrible. Metallica? <laughs> Metallica was good? Oh, that's a, yeah. I was just thinking the same goddamn thing. Script, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, well, because that's not quite the Beatles. Oh, Pink Floyd. There you go. <laughs> 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 yeah, because that's kind of closer. I guess Pink Floyd would be a better one. But eh, even some of the newer Pink Floyd stuff ain't that bad. I did like their last new song. It was pretty good, even though uh, Roger had nothing to do with it really. So, um, no, I don't know. I'd have to think on that one a little bit. Uh, Hey, Tom, Drunk's got to roll out. Yeah, no problem. We're actually going to be wrapping up here soon anyway. But Drunk, do you have anything you want to plug or uh, anything you want to promote? Uh, no, I just I I really just want to thank all of you guys and, and people in the chat. The uh, the nine line stuff just went crazy. And I saw, I mean, yeah, I people saw that, that couldn't even that. buy or like retweeted and did all those things. And the podcast is doing amazing. And I'm, I'd love to have all you guys on. I'm just I'm trying to schedule now and. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all the encouragement and retweets and and reaching out uh, for so many of you here on the panel and and I see you all in the chat. It really it really meant a lot to me. Um, you know, 
it, it, it was it's it's been a crazy few months so all in the well, Jay, you're doing so. fantastic your new podcast is absolutely amazing Thank and then you. for and then the people in the chat if you're not a member to channel if you join a membership to his channel what he does or patreon is that he then continues the conversations and goes does deep dives and covers stuff that isn't necessarily youtube friendly jay you did a great job with that with both sides of the coin i've never been more proud to be a member and supporter of your channel like so many of us are you're doing amazingly great work and we're cheering you on absolutely uh, very humbling thank you uh thank you so much so that's it tom always a pleasure i know we've we've been missing because of my work but um you know we'd lo i'd love to change that i know we've been missing each other no i know it happens man. i give you shit stuff, about it so. but like no oh, I know you can it but i know it's out of love so i know yeah exactly and no um, i'm so glad you were able to make it in here today this has been a treat uh to have you hop in with us man so check out jay's channel thank of course, you Trump thank you guys and park hopping as well so there you go appreciate it y'all have a wonderful amazing monday i'll talk to y'all take soon. care of yourself and i'd just like to say i appreciate all of your altruism throughout the uh time that i've known of you oh thank you, you man Thanks I a lot appreciate that. Things for I appreciate it. It means a lot. Have a great day. Have the sexiest man on YouTube. I'm so. going to go have some Arby's for lunch. Ooh, that sounds good, actually. <laughs> and before you pop out, I just want to oh. say thanks for joining so much. It's awesome to have you here. Awesome to see you again. Sorry, oh, I have wow, to Oh, wow, Andre, thank you. Andre, thank, thank you so control, much. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. Like, I'm alone with two kids here, so I have to, like, try to balance <laughs> everything. Watch and pop and now it's bedtime on top of everything. So, yeah. All right. yeah, and I got a dog. Have a great one. Nuts. Have <laughs> a great care, day, Jay. Uh, so, yeah, Melvin Belliard, thank you for that. Uh, I'll think on that and I'll try to come up with a good uh, analogy for Star Wars. And then the next one down here, where'd it go? This thing, now it's jumping on me again, but we can still go back. But, okay. Uh, well, I'll sort it out if you have like a delivery coming and uh, uh, the well, I'm not sure what's going on, but Sadie was barking for like the last 20 minutes now she's quit now that you're back uh, but no, Mega no, Wing now Zero. it's no longer urgent well I'll, I'll try and go see what's going on why don't you take Mega Wing Zero here yeah, yeah we got certainly. it we got it go go the Mega Wing Zero says for twenty dollars. When I saw the uh, saw the Marvel announced their lineup for movie and shows, I rolled my eyes because I think they're going to make a movie and a show a big world changing event, and it's going to be a giant mess, just like the current state of comics. And yeah, I see what you're saying, and I do kind of agree that it does look like they're trying to outdo themselves and do this world reality changing thing and just like the comics is going to be a complete and total disaster mm -hmm. this is what i think is so frustrating with marvel they were off to such an amazing start and they had decades of amazing stories in the comics to adapt and then they just went straight from infinity war to the worst period in the comics there's ever been namely the modern one and they just <laughs> yeah. bypass and Andre the thing is, years of comics, great stories, man. They're storyboards. Exactly. Exactly. All the They're storyboards. Done. Just, just and the most frustrating things. there's the Eternals. The bubbles. I mean, you should have used Jack Kirby's uh, storyboards there, but yeah, don't even get me started on that. But anyway, yeah, it's worth so a comic in the one movie. Yeah. So incredibly frustrating how they completely and utterly botched that. I'm just going to, because I've been out for a little while, I'm just going to see if there's any more Super Chats before or after that we missed her. Um, let's see. Uh, we're caught up to up till this point, right? Uh, I, think yeah, so. I, think that's what Tom, I think that's what Tom said. <laughs> yeah, okay. Then I uh, then I uh, trust what he said. After that, we'll see if I can find it or if I have to go back uh, too far in the... Uh, in the chat here. Otherwise, I'm just going to go straight to the repository behind the scenes here. Uh, let's see how far back we have to go. Meanwhile, uh, T Neil 89 says, wait, is Jesse a pirate or a lumberjack? Uh, oh. To which I say, one does not have to rule out the other. Yeah, no. <laughs> how do you think he built his boat? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just <laughs> exactly. He's a well, lumberjack that pirates, and when he's busy pirating, he's selling lumber to other ships. <laughs> I have chopped down a lot of trees, though. <laughs> and uh, T Neil eighty nine, he also said for two dollars, wish I had enough room for RLM like wall of DVDs. Uh, is that Red Letter Media? Uh, because yeah, yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. 
I think they have a warehouse that they shoot in. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, they have probably they have like that warehouse filled with VHSs. I want to know how much space Tom's collection takes up. <laughs> Big. <clears throat> well, uh, he's more never than like left. I don't have that. Yeah. I wish that I had room for such a collection, but I have to move house at some point, I guess. The worst thing is, is when you when you when you've collected for years, but every time they change a format, you still are obsessed, and you want the movie in the new format, and you go from DVD to Blu-ray, or was what it was it HD DVD, then Blu-ray. Yeah, it was HD, and then, was because great. it was like it was DVD, and then you had like two competing formats, right. HD DVD and Blu-ray, of which the superior, namely Blu-ray, won out, which is a good thing. But I have the solution for that custom covers and i got into it oh. because of exactly how you said like i wanted the covers to look like this cover right here or actually no when i got into custom covers it was like i love how this looks apart from this one cover right because this this is such like glaring and shiny and it really kind of like just ruins the the, the, the blu-ray shelf and i see there's like yeah there's like a web page where I can print out my own custom covers. So I'm just gonna replace the cover for this one that ruins my entire Blu-ray collection. And I did that. And I was like, wow, that was awesome. That cover looks super sweet now. Unfortunately, now it's all the other covers that look like hell. Oh, wow. And yeah. I was I, custom covers. I mean, I, I still That's have a vicious cycle. Yeah, 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 it really is. I have stuff really from is. Beta. You remember Beta, Andre? Betamax? Uh, I re not personally. I like I'm <laughs> young enough that I. No, uh, I didn't. It, it is within my memories, but I'm aware of it. Yeah. I mean, I just I pulled my collection out uh, four months ago, and it's, I still have VHS and Betas up until DVD, and then DVDs and UHD, laser discs, the big laser discs. Yeah, that was the one point where the the laser disc ended up being taking up more space than the VHS yeah. because it was the size of a vinyl record. And then they did DVDs. You're like, oh, I can now collect more movies with DVD and Blu-ray. And we were hoping that the next physical phase would be maybe a, a third of that size. So then you could actually only have like maybe a closet full of all the same movies that would normally take up your living room size. Yeah, and exactly. That and then went straight to streaming, where it's like, okay, it's now just on my modem. Or a, no, my no, no, no. You, you you skipped over CDI. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. that's well, not, I remember not a format, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember like, yeah, thinking like, whoa, this, this CDI thing, this looks really cool. It's just that the, the picture quality is crap, and you can't fit a movie on a disc. <laughs> well, that was like, unfortunate. <laughs> but, uh, Outside yeah, of yeah. putting into 4K for you, I suggest checking out our uh, stream we did with uh, Robert. Uh, was uh, Not Robert. Uh, Bill Hunt. Bill Hunt. Uh, way back when, and it's where we first talked about still one wars, of our greatest streams, uh, and so ahead of its time. Shit. Yeah, yeah. And we talk yeah. about a lot of the 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 whole how DVD came to be, the whole history of home video. No, oh, I, I want to look at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll put a link here, and also we predicted everything that's happening right now in the streaming wars. We predicted like I believe it was five years ago we did that stream. It still only has like 10,000 views or something. Yeah, like I know. Sadly, is. it's yeah, wow. now we're both well viewed, but it's like a two hour discussion with him. And I mean, we go through the entire, like, we, we, I mean, of course, there's a few minor formats we overlook, but we go through the entire history for the most part of home video up through now. And then we talk about the future of streaming war and how this is going to affect things going forward. I want to find the link for this. Just considering how long ago it was, it is kind of cool. Well, uh, the reason I kept, I kept my laser disc was I had the star Wars set and that was the yeah. last time they had that original Lucas's original. Now the I was never it. fortunate enough to get into laser disc. I had a buddy who did. Um, but, yeah, my player died. So it's I just have all these discs. I'm like hoping one day to. You know, I fix. pissed at him because he went and sent sold his whole entire oh. home theater system with his laser disc and collection mm. for like next to nothing. And I'm like, you, I'm like you I would have gave you like, twice that. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. like, are yeah. you dumb? And I don't want to replace them all. Mm. I used to go to two places each week. There was a place he, he used to be owned by Radio Shack. It was yeah. there. This I is the stream we're talking about. It's a link to right there oh, now. Cool. Like, this is a, for anyone into any kind of physical media. This is a must-watch stream. In fact, I'm going to okay. put it on the 4K for you playlist as well, which okay, you'll find over at Midnight Edge yeah. Live Archives. 
Wonderful. It's kind of a prototype for that in a way. Yeah, yeah, in a way it is. I, way it I mean, is. I want to ask Bill to come back because I, I got to give him a big, like, you were right, I got to eat a bunch of crow because <laughs> I I used to argue with him up and down about 4K, and now I'm totally, totally eating crow on that. Uh, then Paulus Plain was the next one, I would think. Yes, he in. was indeed. And he says, for 100 Norwegian krona, and he says, Amazon's Blue Origin has not launched a single orbital rocket jet. Tesla has Netflix in their cars. SpaceX has 1,447 operational satellites. Starlink is king. Think of the future. And uh, yeah, I have to say that Blue Origin really ain't that impressive. Okay, fine, you were able to get William Shatner above the Carmen line, yeah. but uh, but basic, but uh, let's put it this way: uh, the Soviets had you beat in the 1950s with Sputnik because that at least put something into orbit, right. which appears to be beyond um, Blue Origin's capabilities, at least right now. Maybe not theoretical possibility, but. Uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, do better, I mean, Bezos. He do seems better. to be in the know. Um, is the Artemis program still moving forward at its normal rate? or was that uh, yeah, it, yeah, yes, it is moving forward at its uh, normal rate. Its it normal is. rate being, uh, well, let's talk in 20 years. Well, you forget on Captain Kirk, there's that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, the Artemis program is the official NASA program. I, I haven't checked in on it. Like, really, yeah, uh, everyone in NASA now, right? needs to be fired. Or how they completely bungled this the past 30 years. Oh, yeah. See, it I just agree. worries me because if they don't do that, then there's not a reason for them to fund the Starlink for them. So are they going to move forward with it? Probably. Yeah. So they're going to... Because basically they have to like redo the, the, the Saturn V with modern technology. That's kind of like much of the delay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got this right. one already yeah. where we... Uh, what about this the, one? One does not the other. This is where we were. Melvin Belly, it says for $10. There was a lawsuit a few years ago where someone brought up the issue when you buy a digital copy of a movie or show you don't actually own it. You're buying the license from Amazon until they lose. Yes. Yeah, and that's exactly right. That is I think exactly I was right. kind of. I think I loosely referred to this, but yes, that's that's exactly it. Uh, unfortunately, it's just basically a long term rental. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's like, that that goes uh, for different markets too. Because like on GTA Online, you have a whole bunch of radio stations, and if they the contract runs up, it's removed. So my it's not suggestion, like you got it with the game. And, my suggestion oh, is to do like movies anywhere because that way it puts it on multiple platforms for you usually if it's available to do so and they all seem to keep getting bought up and conglomerated together so sooner or later like what george was asking earlier with the whole streaming services we are going to see that with a event because that's the <clears> thing <throat> even people are still okay people will rent things digitally but a lot of people are still pretty leery about buying them digitally, I think. Uh, I, and, and because of this, we've seen now, like, what was it? We went from, like, three different uh, services down to, like, two now, basically. And the one's Voodoo owned by Fandango, which used to be, like, a, a three or four different services. Then you got iTunes and you got Amazon. That's basically your choices now as to where you can buy movies from digitally. You used to have a lot more choices. <laughs> um, and so like if like Fandango went and bought up like a couple of them, including Voodoo, which was like the last big one left besides iTunes. So and Amazon, if you count them. So like that's what I'm saying. Like that, that's about where we're at. Um, my that's my suggestion is if you're going to do that kind of stuff, do it through either movies anywhere or something like Amazon to where the chances are they're going to be around for a while. Because um, I had more luck doing it that way. That way it's on multiple platforms. Or let Tom sell you on 4K, and next thing you know, you're buying 4K, one of three of them every single <laughs> honestly, yeah. Yeah. honestly, I didn't even get to that part as far as, like, quality-wise. I mean, if you're somebody who actually gives more of a shit about the quality, you're not going to want to do streaming anyway unless you Bro, have. Bro, I just popped in that 4K Godzilla on Saturday. Holy banana frack. Whoa. <laughs> you liked it, huh? Whoa, well, that's whoa, the thing whoa, is, like, whoa. your best 4K streaming is probably on par with a damn just maybe a step above blu-ray if that if you're, if you're hardwired yeah exactly and you got to have a pretty strong like disney seems to do okay with 4k but 
Now I've seen comparisons to the discs and even though it looks good to your eye at first glance, there's still a bit of degradation there still that, but those, but Disney plus probably has the best compression system I've seen so far of all of them. Right. Uh, there is that, there is that one service that like I was telling you about earlier, the Kaleidoscape, they're the only service that uh, streams in 4k. You have to buy their system because they've cut it. They've cut a, they have licensing agreements. So, it's uh they obviously have uhd and they have disc but they have their 4k is pure 4k you should look at it tom i'll have to check into that yeah um so yeah yeah this lawsuit uh, did happen and basically they just told you yeah you're <laughs> shit out of luck if it goes away basically yep, digital movies have an expiration date and you're not going to know when that is could be tomorrow could be next week what's ironic is uh one of the first because it started with books uh, it happened on Amazon, and one of the first books to disappear for a while, ironically, was 1984. <laughs> hey, they the license on it. You know, they probably just bought them all up because they're using them for instruction manuals. Yeah. <laughs> Melvin Belliard has another one right after that who says, Andre, don't worry if the KK news turns out to be true, and with the S show, a shit show, that Disney and Marvel are you able to afford that new or you'll be able to afford that new home very soon. <laughs> yeah, so always good to take like the glass half full perspective. I'd like oh, to yeah. buy a house sometime. That'd be yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, Spider Unlimited says, I'm at the point. Oh, that's where I keep saying, yeah, go ahead. Please put Brie Larson in a Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You make videos from here to eternity. Spider Unlimited says, yeah, I'm at you'd the have to watch it. Right, I'm at the point of downloading and streaming out of the physical space. Ah, oh, that's yeah, I understand. That's a very common problem. I mean, there's loads of people that have stopped buying DVDs and Blu-rays and what have you not for this simple reason: their and, shelf, their actual IKEA shelf, right, is full. Well, <laughs> I actually have a decent-sized living room slash dining room area, mm -hmm. and I tell you, the walls are taken up with. Well, what's 90% my Blu-rays and DVDs, and then the rest is my my CDs and records because I have so much physical media. But what I've done is I've gone through now, and a lot of the stuff that I have on DVD and Blu-ray, I've gotten rid of the copies unless there's something I have to keep it for. Um, but like I know, Andre, you went transferred it all over to a digital Plex service kind of thing, right? Oh, yeah, man. yeah, exactly. Uh, so like uh, my physical collection, just for, for simplicity and ease of use and stuff like that, I simply just took my own physical media, and I do keep the physical media, but I kind of like the in stuff boxes. that I don't want to display in shelf, I, I kind of like have in storage. Mm. And then I have like the only very, very select cream of the crop. That's kind of like what I keep the displayed. And everything else, I just dumped into into a hard drive, and uh, and uh, play it on uh, Cody. And uh, according to Norwegian law, I can do that because Norwegian law has declared that it's perfectly legal to take digital copies of your own physical Technically media. Technically, it is here. Yeah. Um, and then there's also this choice as well uh, for another ease of use. Uh, Spider Unlimited says, I'm at the point of downloading and streaming out of physical space. Is there a service that you know of that can transfer DVDs over? I have Voodoo, but they charge five bucks per movie for conversion. No, that's pretty much the only other way other than what Andre just said. Um, that's the best and only way I know to do it. But in, in most cases, you can almost buy a Blu-ray with a digital copy for like six, seven bucks or cheaper in most cases. So you can't just put it in your computer and save it. Technically, yes, you legally can. That's what yeah. Andre is talking about. And that's what yeah. I do. But of course, I have, to have like, yeah, I, I have to have like yeah, a NAS on the side to do it because I have like 20 terabytes of storage space for... for uh, yeah, exactly. That's the thing, yeah. though. Is that all in yeah. one unit? Uh, have, yeah, all of that have... is in... Well, it's in one unit with a uh, spread across five hard drives. Yeah, exactly. Uh, with, like, so fail safes and everything. That, that, yeah. That'd be the thing that, I, that would scare the shit out of me, because once in a while, you'll have a corruption in a hard drive. Exactly, but here's, like, the thing. That's why you want to use a NAS, because, uh, because there you have, like, various ways of security, so you have, like, the data spread across multiple hard drives uh, and you have like the system that is such that if one hard drive one or more hard drives uh, suddenly calls it the day then you have enough information on the others that you can restore all oh. of the missing information 
Is the NAS like Andre like a RAID system used to be? Yes, that's RAID. Yes. Okay. That's exactly, okay. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it's just like RAID. So you can choose if you want like RAID 2, RAID 5. So Jesse, there is uh, technical solutions for that. So you want a it's NAS like a digital sampling of music where they would take like a millisecond and put it on this hard drive, a millisecond on the next and on the next. Exactly. And over so that you exactly, have, like, exactly. Like so say, for instance, you have like a 20%. Uh, you, so you split up the content. So like uh, 20% is on that hard drive, 20 on that hard drive, 20 on that and 20 on that. And mm. then if up to as much as two fails, that's enough that with the software uh, that, is, that is there plus the, plus the remaining 60% that you have on all the others is enough to restore. The missing section now how was it to set that up though was it a pain in the ass or that is a pain in the ass on? but uh, that is it a pain is. in the ass but it can be done <laughs> so well, you have to you have to set up these five hard drives or x amount of hard drives with your computer and then hook it up to a tv uh what you do is that uh is that you you get like the second uh, this the separate like nas which is like uh which is its own thing and it's in this thing that you put uh, mm -hmm. That you put the the hard drive, so many hard drives is made for. That can be as little as two. It can be up to twenty, depending on your needs. But uh, but for like most uh, most uses, you you will have one that uh, like an entertain entertainment now is like typically like four or five hard drives. And you can easily get like up to uh, easily up to like twenty thirty terabytes of uh, of uh, wow. space uh, space for that. Yeah, that's a ton. And uh, yeah, yeah. What, and what and this then typically is something that you don't connect directly up to your computer. You connect it to your router. Oh. And uh, then you then you control it over the Wi-Fi. So first you set up what kind of RAID level protection you want. And then it's simply a matter of uh, of of. Um, I was gonna say there's similar technology. The I believe in like an Xbox and stuff where you can. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. you simply stream from yeah. there over your Wi-Fi. My only issue with that device, is I've done that, and I have degradation problems once in a while, depending on what's going on in the house. That's my okay. Only Tom, you're a picture quality whore. That's my problem. Yeah. yeah. And what what you would do with that, like for instance, that's one the way that you can do it. But what I have, for instance, is that I I, I have the huge NAS for like storage, but then I have like um, a five terabyte uh, separate hard drive that I just plug straight into the Kodi, and that's where I have like the library of stuff that I watch on a day to day basis. Uh, so so, so then how, that's how big is all the overall thing? Like how big is it? Could you take it over and watch it at Timmy's house? And you'll have. Uh, I would not. Through? Well, here, here's like the thing that um, you can set it up so that you can watch it from Timmy's house by accessing the NAS from there. You can log into the NAS and uh, see everything that you allow to be shared from it. So you can set that up. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do have to start wrapping up here, um, but we did have another super chat from Tanil. Uh, I did an interview with Gene Carnan at in college nearly a decade ago. He lamented that NASA is focusing on space space exploitation and forgetting exploration. I know this is something that is near and dear to your heart as well, Andre. But I, I know don't even have, fucking get me started. So I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, yeah, it'll take way too long for you to get into it. But yeah, I, 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 there's a lot of people who agree with you. I believe to Neil. So uh, you're not alone in those. Uh, feelings uh, i think i can speak for andre on that don't worry there's gonna be a theme park on the moon i saw it on futurama <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna make my own <clears throat> no, it probably will in time. Time. uh but at, a, at another time we'll definitely get into that because i know andre has a lot to say about that and he has in the past so uh yeah str red wolf says uh you can buy a synology nas that takes care of setting up the raid add plex to it and stream it to your tv like a roku student yep yeah. exactly i think that's basically or you can also do like the low version solution you have that as a storage and if, if like tom you're worried about like uh, everything <laughs> else then have a like a mini hard drive that you physically connect to that's kind of what i have otherwise i have yeah like, the little but yeah as success uh, with that i believe it's time to wrap up here. yeah i think we, we should uh, so check out George's channel, George the Giant Slayer. Uh, check out Jesse at the Crow's Nest. Check out Script Doctor. Mexican Iron Man has his own channel as well, but he produces like every show on YouTube. So check him out wherever he's at at that time of the day. Has uh, anybody got anything specific they want to plug real quick before we do run? Uh, no. I just have uh, my Eternals review is up. I'm going to be reviewing Ghostbusters this week. Yeah. So typically. 
Well, we, we, do do Ghostbusters, yeah. we have a Ghostbusters video coming right. in 45 minutes. And here awesome. is the link for that in the chat. You can park up and wait for that. Uh, that'll be dropping real soon there, kids. Uh, we want to thank you all for being here, and we want to say take care of yourselves and each other. And with that, I believe it is time for some marsupials in the rain. And check out Toxic Feminine Electric Night. That is true as well. Yeah. Good night. Koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. No fucks given. Koala, koala. Koalas in the rain.